What's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today we have a crazy story of a Karen who thinks that the laws don't apply to her. So she starts breaking laws in front of the police officers. And let me just say that this is one of the most wild Karen stories I have ever received. And I know you'll enjoy it. So sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing. And let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Aiden. So anyways, Aiden was about 17, 18 at the time, and over the summer, he got a summer job working at this grocery store. So he didn't really have consistent hours, so sometimes he'd be working in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, and sometimes really late at night. Like, this was one of those grocery stores that was open practically 24 hours a day. I don't know if it was 24 hours, but he worked a very late shift on, when this story started, he was at a very late shift. So this was like, I don't know, 11, 12 at night. So you'd have a few people come in every like 20 minutes or so, but it really wasn't rush hour. And he was also the only person in the store, which makes this Karen story even more interesting because this Karen decides to come in and start some problems when it's only Aiden. Remember, this kid's like 17 and she's about to give him the hardest time possible. So it all started as what seemed like a normal night. But as all these stories go, they do not turn out to be normal nights. So anyways, Aiden was working at the cash register. He was also in charge of basically anything else going down at the store because he was the only one there. So if someone needed, like if something needed to be put back or anything like that, he was in charge as he was the only one there. But he was mainly, ma like mainly manning the cash register at this point. So all of a sudden, at like 12.15, no one else in the store, no one else working there, no one else getting stuff. He hears the door open, so he looks over he sees this old he sees this woman come in this older woman she looks very angry she has a look she just has a look on her face as soon as she walks in she she just has this kind of look that you know that she's going to be trouble like off the bat you know that she's just going to be difficult she's going to be a situation from they know that she's going to be a situation from like the moment she walks in the door that's honestly what it's looking like right now so Aiden kind of looks at her as she very angrily walks up to his desk and He's like, all right, what's, what's good? And she comes up and says, I would like to return this item. And she puts an item on his desk. And I don't know exactly what this item was, but I do have a description of it. It was beaten up. It was broken. It was heavily used. Aiden didn't even know if they sold it here. And she didn't have a receipt. Yeah, I'm going to say that again so I can let that sink in. The Karen was trying to return something that was clearly used so often that it's completely lost its function, whatever it is. It, it doesn't even look like something that Aiden sold at the store, and she also had no proof that she bought it from the store, aka receipt. So Aiden very calmly tells her, hey ma'am, uh, like we do have a return policy saying that it has to like be in pretty good condition, and you also have to have proof of purchase. And this thing is definitely not in good condition. It doesn't look like you have any proof of purchase. And I don't even know if you're in the right store right now because I don't think we sell that here. And the Karen gives him this look. This kind of look of like, how dare you question my authority? I'm your elder. You should do exactly what I say no matter what type kind of look, right? So yeah, um, anyways, the Karen is just like responds to him. I got this from the store, and I have not used it. I only used it once, and it didn't work. I just want my money back. And Aiden's like, uh, could you tell me, like, a description of this item? Because I'm telling you guys, it was so worn out and so used that Aiden couldn't even figure out what this was supposed to be. Like, he didn't even know what to type into the computer to look up to try and figure out what it was because it was so mangled and messed up and beaten up that he couldn't even tell you what it was supposed to be. Like, like, he couldn't even get a good educated guess on it. That's how messed up it was. That's Loki one of the reasons why Aiden wasn't able to tell me what it was, because he genuinely couldn't even figure it out himself. And this is when the Karen guy starts to get really mad. She's like, you know, your business is scamming a local citizen by not giving the money, not giving a refund where the refund was clearly stated that you could get one. And Aiden says, yeah, I mean, we do have a refund policy, but it's also pretty clearly stated that you need a receipt to get the refund. And she's like, you know, I, I just don't have it with me. And Aiden's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, but like, if you have it, like, even if you have it at home, 
we're gonna need you to like go back and get it like i know that's a bit of a trek but it's his policy like i don't run the store i just work here i can't be doing stuff like that and so because aiden was maybe gonna be lenient if she had a receipt and then he could at least type in the item and see if they actually had it because like Aiden was low-key trying to call her bluff because he was pretty confident that they did not sell whatever this was supposed to be. But she goes on to say, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, she just like has a mental breakdown. It's like, well, how about you, you just give me my money and I'll get the receipt later, which is like the most ridiculous thing ever. I get that she doesn't want to make the drive, but what if that, like, here's the thing. Let's say that you didn't want to make the drive. Wouldn't it just make sense for you to be like, you don't need the receipt here, this like, give me a refund instead of saying, give me the money now, I'll drive back and get the receipt and bring it back to you. Like that literally makes no sense, bro. So yeah, Aiden kind of just kind of puts his foot down a little bit and explains to her, look, without the receipt, I can't even begin the process of trying to give you a refund. Like not even, not even talking about the state of this item right here as he kind of motions towards like the completely destroyed item, of whatever it was, not even to mention the state of this item, just like very generally, I don't think I can even give you, start to give you a refund for this. So the Karen, something changes in her eyes. Something evil starts to brew behind those, the, those cold, dark eyes or whatever. And she's like, so you've chosen to disrespect me. And he's like, uh, so you have chosen to tarnish your elders. And he's kind of like, bro, what, what, what are you, what are you saying right now? I genuinely don't know what's going on. So you have chosen. And he's like, all right, bro. Cause he's like, all right, this, she's going on about something. I don't know what's going on right now, but it's not like I can do anything about it. And she's like, so the, I'm going to enact citizen's justice. Bro, not even citizen's arrest, which is the goofiest thing that you only hear Karen say. Citizen's justice. I'm pretty sure that's just called breaking the law. Oh, man, I'm just going to enact my own justice. When has that ever been said and then something good follows it, bro? Like, actually give me a time and a place and I'll, I'll believe you. But until I hear it, I don't believe you, bro. So anyways, she turns and she starts walking down one of the aisles. And Aiden is so confused at this point because he genuinely just has no idea what's going on. And sure enough, the Karen goes up to one of the aisles and says, are you going to give me a refund? Yes or no? And I mean, obviously, he's not going to give her a refund because why would he give her a refund at this point? She's giving him no reasons to give him a refund. Actually, she's given him so many reasons not to give him like to give her a refund at this point. And he's like, uh, no, I still need to see your receipt to start the process. And, and, then, and then the Karen takes a big, like, okay, so it was, I think it's like, let's just say it's a big rack of vegetable oil. It was a bunch of something, right? She takes a hand and plows through it all. It all falls on the ground, breaks open, vegetable oil is spilling all over the floor. It's going everywhere. And she turns back to Aiden and just stares him down. And Aiden is pretty shocked at the moment because he had no idea that the Karen was going to start doing actual damage, right? And she's like, do I get a refund now, little guy? And Aiden is just like, whoa, this is out of my range. This is out of my expertise at this point. This was not in the how to be a cashier training. They did not prepare me for crazy Karens in my training, bro. That's all I'm going to say is I was not prepared for something like this. So sure enough, he's like, uh, like, ma'am, I'm going to ask you to leave. Like, and like, because in his training, I think he was told to like, if anyone's like doing damage or breaking the rules or whatever, you can ask them to leave. And she's like, I'm not leaving before I get my refund. Give me my refund in full and I'll consider leaving. So not even I'll leave, but I'll consider leaving if you give me exactly what I want. She was probably even going to do a little bit more damage after that too, bro, if we're being honest. Yeah, but sure enough, uh, he's like, uh, no, like, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. So what the Karen does is she goes on and just, like, destroys something else. Like, I think she finds, like, something glass or something easy to break. She picks it up, boom, smashes it on the ground, takes another one, lifts it above her head and says, are you going to give me a refund now? And Aiden's like, no, boom, smashes it on the ground again, picks up another one. Are you going to give me a refund now? Aiden just looks at her blankly. Boom! Smashes on the ground. So you can see the pattern here. The Karen's just trying to destroy the entire place until she gets what she wants, right? 
So Aiden picks up the phone, dials 911, as you know you should at this point. Someone's breaking all your stuff, and you're 16, 17, whatever, and no one else is there. Can't call for backup, can't call your manager, can't do any of that. So yeah, calls 911 and kind of explains the situation while big smashing and crashing noises are in the background. Okay, the dispatcher says that they'll have people there in 15 minutes, so just make sure the situation doesn't escalate. Which is a, I don't know, it's a pretty big ass to tell some 15-year-old, hey, I know you're in some crazy situation right now, but make sure that it doesn't escalate. Oh, yeah, he'll just go back to his de-escalating a Karen training. You can't train for that, man. You can't de-escalate a Karen once they go full psycho Karen mode, bro. You can't de-escalate them, bro. Anyways, though, yeah, so he's kind of just behind the cash register watching as this Karen goes around smashing stuff saying, are you going to give me a refund now, little guy? Boom. You're going to give me a refund now? Boom. But all of a sudden, or not all of a sudden, I guess 20 minutes later, the doors open up and two police officers walk in to see the Karen breaking stuff and to see so much stuff on the ground, spilled, broken, all the above, right? I mean, you can't really break, uh, uh, splattered, uh, destroyed, whatever you want to call it. Depends on the item. You can't shatter a, like an apple, but you can smush it, right? So whatever it is, it's all been kind of destroyed. It's all been kind of wrecked. So the police officers come in. They're like, what's going on here? The Karen sees them, turns around, sees a supply closet or like a broom closet. Okay, when I say sprint, I mean sprint super liberally. I don't mean she's like, I don't know, Usain Bolt doing like a one second mile. I'm saying she like power waddles. Yeah, she power waddles to the, uh, what's it called, to the broom closet, gets in there and locks it behind her, which, why did the broom closet lock from the inside? Who knows? Aiden's like, oh, you can't be, you gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me. So police officers, one of them walks over to look over at all the damage and make sure the Karen doesn't escape. The other one goes over to Aaron, Aaron, Aiden, sorry, I think Aaron is the name of the last guy in the last Karen story, actually, and asks them, so can you give me a recap of what happened? So Aiden goes on to say, yeah, so I was just here. She came back with an item. This woman came in with an item, the woman in the closet right now. It was pretty beaten up and she didn't have a receipt and she was demanding a refund. And I basically told her that, well, one, her item was so like beat up and destroyed. I couldn't even tell her that. I couldn't even tell if it came from here or not. But also, but, you know, second, you know, if she doesn't have a receipt, I can't even start the process to giving her a refund. So without the receipt, I couldn't even give her one. So she got really mad at this and started breaking stuff, demanding a refund. And uh, by the time you guys came, she's like broken about a third of the store's items. Like, this is pretty crazy. I didn't want to intervene, though, because I don't know what this woman's capable of or, you know, how deranged she really is. Police officer said, okay, son, you did the right thing calling us and trying to keep the situation as calm as possible. We'll take it from here. So they both go up and actually like Aiden stays in the cash register, but this is a fairly small convenience store. So it's not, so he can hear everything good that goes on. So they go up to the broom closet and they're like, ma'am, what's the meaning of all this? And she's like, that little rat scallion won't get, or rap scallion won't give me a, a refund on my items that I purchased from the store. He is stealing from the elders right now. And they're like, ma'am, first of all, he just works here. He can't make the rules. Second of all, it's pretty clearly stated and there was a legit sign talking about refunds in the store. So it's not like the Karen had no idea at all. It was actually fairly clear. But anyways, they're like, ma'am, it's pretty clear from like what we're seeing, like, and they point to the sign, you do need like a receipt to get a refund. Like that's just kind of the deal here. And she's like, well, he should have known. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. The Karen was just going on about something about how she deserved a refund and how it's so bad that she didn't get one or something. But yeah, I don't, I don't even know. And eventually they were like, ma'am, if you don't like, if you don't come here or if, or it's like, if you don't come out right now, we're going to go in there and get you for like, and I don't know. They say something along the lines of that. And that's when the Karen starts maniacally slash evilly laughing it is one of the weirdest, most off-putting, like, responses that Aiden could have ever heard. Like, it is the weirdest thing ever. The Karen just starts laughing. Laughing hysterically. Like an evil villain in a superhero movie. 
when she's in the closet. And what she's about to say next is one of the craziest things Aiden has ever heard anyone ever say. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I like to see all the people who commented. I'll try and heart as many of those comments as I possibly can. Thank you guys. Anyways, also, these videos are on Spotify, or I try and put as many of them as I possibly can. Link's in the description. Also, follow tic my new TikTok, or it's the same TikTok, I guess. I'll be posting my shorts on there as well if you want to help out. And finally, the best way to support the channel is just to binge watch the videos. So at some point, sit down and just watch a bunch of my old story videos. Or maybe right after you're done watching this one to the end, you can just keep on watching more videos. I'll have a story time playlist in the pinned comment. That makes it real easy for you guys to watch. And please, 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 if you are binge watching the videos, make sure to comment down below telling me such so I can say thank you personally. Anyways, let's get back to the crazy Karen story. So anyways, a little recap. The Karen has ran into the broom supply closet, right? Because she sees the police and she, she knows she's about to be arrested. Aiden explains the whole situation to the police and explains it like, all right, this is what's going on. This is what's going down. And they're like, okay, uh, they probably got their walkie talkie. We're like, we got a, we got a code 58 crazy Karen in a convenience store. I repeat, we got a code 58. I don't know if that's a real code or something, but let's just say for the sake of it, code 58 equals crazy Karen in convenience store. Typical situation they have to deal with on the daily at this point. But anyways, they go up to the Karen and they basically tell her, look, we're going, if you don't come out here and like, we're going to we're going to go into the supply closet. We're going to open that door if you don't open it yourself. And that's when the Karen starts laughing maniacally, which is one of the most off-putting responses you could have possibly heard. One of the most off-putting responses in general, right? So sure enough, the Karen is just laughing, laughing maniacally. And she says, you guys can't arrest me. You can't arrest me. And the, the, the police officers are just looking at her. And she says, you wouldn't dare arrest a woman. That is not very gentlemanly of you. So the Karen opens up the door and starts laughing. And the two police officers are just looking at each other. And they look back at the Karen. And then the, they look at each other. And then they look back at the Karen. And the Karen responds. Re the Karen repeats herself and says, You guys wouldn't dare arrest a woman, so I'm going to walk free. Unless you want to be bad gentlemen. Bro was really raised in the 1700s or something, bro. I don't know what, I don't know what, what crossed her mind to think that that's actually what's going to happen. But that is what's going to happen, bro. Like, I was like, all right, word. So she walks out there, and the police officers are like, uh, ma'am, you caused all this damage to the store. We are going to have to at least take you in for questioning. She's like, what? No, you wouldn't dare not be good gentlemen. <laughs> they just kind of look at each other. And Aiden is just so floored by this response. He's just so, he, he, he's trying to figure out what's going on. Aiden's like, is this really her response? Is this her really her get out of jail free card moment is saying that they wouldn't dare arrest her because she's a woman and they would not disrespect their manlyhood or I don't freaking know, bro. But yeah, um, they basically say, I don't know if that's how that's going to work. So they turn her around, they take out the handcuffs and she says, you wouldn't dare do that. And they both look at each other and then they put on the handcuffs and she's like, no, no, arrest him. And they both look at each other, the two police officers looking at each other like, bro, what did this, what did she just say? And she's like, arrest that guy behind the cash register. Pointing to Aiden or like motioning to Aiden because she's got her hands behind her back. It's a little hard to point to someone when you're in handcuffs with your hands behind your back. And they're just like, uh, why? And she's like, he's robbing me of my, of my refund. They're like, uh, what? She, he's robbing me of my refund. And they're like, ma'am, ma'am, you, you, first of all, you know what, ma'am? No, because <laughs> they're not going to explain it to her for the hundredth time of how, like, no, if you want a refund, you've got to get your own receipt. And no, if he's not doing it, he just works for it. And they're done explaining it to the Karen. And as the Karen is being walked out, she looks at Aiden and looks at him dead in the eyes and says to him, this isn't over. Mark my words. And that was like one of the most chilling responses Aiden could have ever received. And uh, let me just say, she did not lie. This was not over. 
and she was definitely not done. Unfortunately for Aiden, she was very much not done. Because she was about to return in the worst way possible. Fast forward three months. Aiden is still working here. It's like, it's kind of towards the tail end of the summer. So Aiden's like, this is like his last week or last two weeks or something. But he's basically, he's almost done with what he's doing, right? And it's, he's completely forgotten about the Karen incident. His manager came in the next day after the whole Karen incident, kind of gave him a, uh, a thank you for handling the situation well. The shop actually closed down for a couple days to reassess or whatever. They, uh, the Karen was like fined X number of dollars to repay for whatever. And she actually did, which is a little surprising, especially for what she's about to do. It's a little surprising she went through with it. Um, she definitely had a change of heart, that's all I'm trying to say. But yeah, after about a week, they got the place up and running again. And uh, Aiden was made like employee of the month or whatever out of the three employees they had. So wow, such an honor, man. But anyways, uh, fast forward like two months later, three months later, whatever I said, this is like one of the last, this is either the last week or second to last week that Aiden's working the shift. And, uh, you know, he just has completely forgotten about the whole Karen situation. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't think much of it. He's kind of at the point where he's like, okay, you know, I'm kind of wrapping things up. The Karen situation's in the back of his head at this point. And, uh, that's when he just happens to look out the window and he just happens to look at a car that's pulling in. And he just happens to notice someone walking out of the car that looked oddly familiar. And he just happened to notice that the person who looked so oddly familiar was carrying a freaking baseball bat, bro. And that's when he realized that the reason why this person looked so, so familiar was that this was the Karen. Yeah, the Karen that got arrested and tried to destroy the entire store three months ago has returned in broad daylight, with a freaking baseball bat, dude. So yeah, immediately Aiden calls 911. Because at this point, you know, the Karen has been told never to return, and if she does, there's going to be trouble. And she's also returning with a baseball bat. So at this point, it just makes a lot of sense for Aiden to get ahead of the situation. So while he's on the phone, you know, he explains, like, this woman has caused damage before. She's appeared in the parking lot with a baseball bat very suspiciously. I just would feel better if someone came because I can almost guarantee something's about to go down. They, and they, this is kind of a local police department. So I think the person even literally remembers what happened before. So, uh, yeah, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we got you. We got you this. Don't worry about it. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, uh, the police are coming, but the police, it, it's going to take like 15, 20 minutes. So Aiden's a little nervous right now, but there's another cash, uh, cashier there. Someone wa- he's not the only one at the store at the moment. So he yells at them, says, hey, we got trouble. Person comes up. He's like, oh my God, who's that? And Aiden looks at him and says, you know that Karen I was telling you about that one night? And the guy that Aiden's working with looks at him in a look of disbelief, like no way that's the same person. And Aiden has to break the bad news that yes, that is the same person. And that person is coming at them with a baseball bat. Yeah, not looking good for both of them right now. So anyways, right, you know, they're both like, okay, what is she going to do? And the Karen makes eye contact with Aiden. Aiden makes eye contact with the Karen. And the Karen starts bursting out into laughter as she approaches the place with a baseball bat. Yeah, yeah. Not looking really good right now. So she starts walking towards them with a baseball bat and uh, goes up, like, opens up the door window and says, "You or not the door window, opens up the, the door. And Aiden is staring at her. And the other person Aiden is working with has frozen as well and is just staring at her as well. And they're just looking at her. And she's just looking at them. And she has this big grin on her face. And let me just say that they do not have the same grin on their faces. To say the least, they do not have the same look of excitement and joy that the Karen is with them. They are not equally as happy that this is the case. Yeah, so they're all just making eye contact with the crazy deranged Karen who's standing in the door with a baseball bat right now. And she's just looking at them. And she says, you didn't think I'd be back. I told you. You should have given me that refund all that time ago. And now I had to, I'm taking my revenge and immediately, she turns to one of the windows. Boom! 
hits it with the baseball bat. The window shatters. At this point, Aiden's real scared. Understandably. Because look, when the Karen was destroying stuff in the store, he was really afraid that it was going to get out of control. But at that point, she was really just breaking stuff with her fists and throwing it on the ground. Like, he really thought, okay, if the Karen comes swinging for me or something like that, it really wouldn't be that big of an issue because, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not too scared. But now the Karen's coming in with an actual baseball bat. Like, that's kind of just a different story right there, bro. That's Loki just a different story. Like, if she swung at him and made contact... Dude, that could do a lot of damage. I don't care if she's barely able to swing it. Like, I don't care if she doesn't have the strongest swing. I don't care if she's not, like, in the MLB. I don't care if she doesn't bench press 325, bro. It doesn't matter. She just, she still has a baseball bat. That's a weapon right there. So Aiden kind of, like, backs up. He makes sure to keep his distance with the Karen. And him and his, like, co-worker are trying to keep their distance, right? And they're just waiting on the police to come. So the Karen is yelling at them, should have given me my discount, should have given me my discount, while slamming the bat into windows, cl basically clean the cash register right off, because she took a clean shot of the cash register with her baseball bat, boom, thing explodes, $10 bills fly everywhere, and then she starts going into the aisles, boom, boom, starts whacking stuff, and that's when the police officers get there. So the police officers get there, they see, they're alerted about the Karen, and I think one of them was actually there last time. So they know about the Karen, and they see her destroying, swinging around a full-fledged freaking baseball bat. So they're definitely on edge at this point, and they're just like, freeze! And the Karen turns around, looking all deranged and crazy, with an actual baseball bat, right? She has a baseball bat out, which is, that's pretty bad. So they're looking at her, and she looks at them, and she says, make me which was probably one of the worst responses that you could have given to two police officers when you're holding a baseball bat. Because one of them does make her. Pulls out the taser, which, I mean, look, you got someone swinging around a baseball bat. I'm not going in to sit down to have a polite conversation either. I get where he's coming from. Taser, zaps her, immediately goes to the ground. I mean, this Karen's not... Uh, this Karen isn't, like, some kind of, like, Iron Man, like, and he was hit with two bullets, and he stood there, unfazed, like, cue whatever music, no, 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 you know, I mean, if you're hit with a taser, you're going down, bro, so, yeah, Karen collapses, baseball bat goes on the ground, one of the police officers rushes over to, like, separate her from the baseball bat, puts her at handcuffs, checks her to make sure she doesn't have, like, any other weapons or something like that, she does not, the other police officer goes over to, once making sure that the, uh, that the Karen is, like, contained or whatever, goes over to Aiden and his co-workers, asks, hey, do you, are you good? Did she hit you with a bat? Are there any damages to you or whatever? Are you guys good? They basically say, yeah, we're safe. Like, we always kept our distance or whatever. And, uh, yeah, one of the police officers who was there last time is like, is this really the same woman that was here, like, three months ago? And, uh, you know, at this point, Aiden recognized this guy from being there three months ago. He's like, yeah, this is the same woman. I haven't seen, and, you know, he says, have you seen her over the last, like, two or three months or however long ago it was? And he says, no, like, I have legitimately not seen her since. She also, the money went through that, like, she was charged for all the damages she did. She paid it through, so we kind of thought that we'd never see her again, but I guess not. So yeah, the police like take her away. Um, obviously, this was a lot more serious. Uh, I don't know exactly what the charges were, as I wasn't told exactly. Um, the because like, remember, this convenience store wasn't some big chain; it was like a mom and pop type location. So they were actually able, through insurance or whatever, or somehow they got the money back. They had to close down again for a second because now there's broken glass and windows and destroyed stuff. And, uh, yeah, the Karen was now very, very much, she was in bigger trouble. I don't know exactly what. I would assume that she served some jail time for that. I doubt she got off on, like, the second time. Because, like, that time she was swinging on them with a bat. Like, that's some serious stuff you're doing right there. But, yeah, moral of the story is, uh, I don't know. Don't be a Karen, bro. Yeah, subscribe if you're new. Watch another click video. Click on the video on the screen channel, right now. Please. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it.
How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have a story of a crazy Karen that ends up stealing the subscriber's dog. I'm not even kidding you. The Karen actually steals slash abducts the dog. It's absolutely crazy. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's just jump right into it and call the subscriber Gabby. So anyways, this all started one day when Gabby was in the dog park, and because Gabby had a dog, it was like, it was a smaller dog, I don't know exactly what type of dog it was, but it was like, maybe it was one of those like white fluffy ones that isn't so big, but it was like a smaller dog, it wasn't a larger dog, that's just kind of an important detail for you to know, um, also because the Karen probably couldn't abduct a large dog anyways, but Gabby was at this dog park that she would go to with her dog on the weekend, so every Saturday, you know, she would drive over and, you know, bring the dog with her, and, you know, they'd be able to walk around, the dog would be able to sniff all these new smells, would be able to see all the other dogs were in the dog park as well. And that's when one day Gabby met, you know, the Karen, who is also at this dog park. So Gabby kind of recognized this older woman who has always kind of been at the dog park, but Gabby and her have never interacted until before this moment, right? So Gabby, this is just a normal Saturday where she's with, you know, her dog in the dog park, and, you know, they're just hanging out, chilling, Life is good. Gabby's dog is sniffing some, uh, you know, sniffing some other dog's butts. You know, standard dog affair. And that's when Gabby's dog turns, looks at the Karen, and barks. And look, it's a freaking dog. Oh, no, it barked at you? Oh, no, that's crazy. No, it's normal. It's standard. But, you know, the Karen was like, oh, good heavens, did your dog just bark at me? And Gabby's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, ma'am. He's, I'm, I'm, he's still, he's a little feisty sometimes, haha. -ha. Normally, right, you know, I'm, I'm a dog owner, and, you know, sometimes my dog is just barks at random people. Dude, that's, that's what they do, bro. That's kind of just how they are. Some of them are better behaved, behaved than others. And it's really like, I don't get personally offended when a dog barks at me. But anyways, right, the Karen is like, you should teach your dog some manners. Like, you definitely have not taught, taken good care of your dog if your dog is barking at random people and going on like that. And, you know, Gabby was a little offended. She was like, what do you mean I, was, I haven't taken good care of my dog? Like, sure, my dog barked at you, but my dog doesn't bark that much. And also, that's not the worst thing. Hey, you know, you know, I, I could understand where you're coming from if my dog was going around biting everyone one or like attacking them or like trying to eat some babies or something sure fair enough i don't know if she said that last part but like i get that but dude she just barked at you but the karen was for some reason completely convinced with herself that like if your dog barks at someone you know you haven't spent the time as a dog owner to make sure that they're i, I don't know I honestly don't know where the Karen was coming from on this, but the Karen kind of just went on and on again about like how like, oh, how Gabby very clearly has not taken care of her dog or whatever and how she's a terrible pet owner. Remember, this is all because the dog barked at the Karen once. Probably because the Karen, the, the dog just got the bad vibes off the Karen. The dog was ahead of the curve. You know, sometimes dogs have these senses that, like, you can't really pick up on. And I think the dog picked up on, like, how insane the Karen was here, bro. I, I swear, I really think that that's the truth here. But anyways, right, so the Karen, so eventually Gabby's like, all right, well, that's fine, ma'am. Because the Karen is continuously going on about, oh such a bad dog owner, meh, stuff like that. So Gabby eventually just gets out of there and goes to a different part of the dog park. And she starts speaking to her dog, and she's like, all right, buddy, let's not bark at anyone crazy like that again. Like, you, most people don't care, but every once in a while, you'll get someone like that. And honestly, Karen, uh, Gabby thought that, okay, well, I'm probably not never going to interact with this Karen again, because sure, like, sure, I'll probably see her again at the dog park. Or sure, maybe, like, I'll run into her on the street or something. But, like, I, if I see her, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be... I'm going to steer clear and away from her because, like, bro, I'm not trying to have another conversation with this woman. Definitely not a productive time trying to have any conversation with her. So Gabby was like, all right, well, this is kind of the last time I'm going to see her. And this was until about, you know, a week later when Gabby was at her own house, right, and she was just walking her dog around the block. However, she was walking out of her house, right, with her dog, so it was very clear that she was coming out of that house. And that's when she made eye contact with the Karen, right, and the Karen just happened to be walking around the neighborhood, and they make eye contact with each other, and the Karen is like, wait, I know you. I know you. Oh, there goes Clara. She's barking at something. Karen's like, I know you. You're from... You're the bad dog owner. And Gabby's like, bro, you can't be serious, bro. Like, uh, really? 
So Gabby kind of just looks at the Karen and thinks to herself, wow, well, looks like I do have to deal with this woman one more time. And Gabby's like, uh, I think you're remembering wrong. Because she's like, yeah, I could probably just, like, <laughs> gaslight this woman to think that her memory's going bad. I'm not trying to deal with her, bro. And sure enough, right, you know, the Karen's like, no, that's definitely you. You were the, you know, the terrible dog owner that your malicious dog barked at me. And Gabby was like, have you really never had a dog bark at you, ma'am? And she completely ignores that question just to continue to, you know, berate Gabby and be like, you're the worst dog owner I've ever met. And you know what? Like, it, it, it's not the dog's fault. It's your fault. That dog, all that dog needs is a bit of training from me. At this point, Gabby's like, wait a minute. Is he trying to, like, pitch me a course or something? Am I being, am I being sold at right now? Like, uh, What? And, you know, and the Karen says, you know what, because I am so kind hearted, because I have such a large heart, right? Because I have love for so many people. And Gabby's like, all right, ma'am, get to the point. And, and it, I mean, she doesn't say that, but that's what she's thinking. And the Karen goes, I, you know what, I will make a very large sacrifice. I will offer that I will take that dog off your hands and I will give it a truly a good home. And Gabby's was just so shocked at this point. Cause she's like, all right, this me like this woman comes up to me and starts yelling at me and then says that she will take the massive sacrifice of stealing my dog. What? And Gabby's like, no, are, are you insane? And the Karen's like, the just more evidence, just more evidence that you were the worst and that the reason why your dog sucks is because you suck. It's not the dog's fault. It's yours. And Gabby is just, she's just so blown away at this point. She's like, the audacity of this woman. God damn. <laughs> no, but anyways, you know, Gabby's like, all right, ma'am, no. Um, I'm now actually going to go walk my dog as I take care of my dog. And my dog is quite well behaved, actually, compared to most dogs. Quite well behaved. And the Karen's like, fine. I didn't, like, I, I can barely handle this level of disrespect and, you know, uh, disrespect to your elders anyways. Like, have, you know, have fun torturing that dog. And the Karen just, like, kind of like pouts and stomps away and Gabby's like oh my god like I didn't think I was gonna have an interaction with that woman again but I definitely did not think that that was gonna I definitely did not think that that was gonna be my interaction like nevertheless like that that's insane so Gabby walks her dog you know because they walk around in the back and so a couple days go by and something when like Gabby and her mom are in the house they have a backyard that is practically fenced in like, it's not, you could go break into it, or you could, as you'll see in a second, you could push into it, you could kind of break into it, you know, but it's, the dog never leaves, so what Gabby and Gabby's mom uh, let the dog do is, like, if the dog kind of goes to the door and kind of, like, scratches or whines near it, they'll let the dog out, and they'll let the dog out into the backyard, and when the dog wants to come back in, the dog will just kind of, like, paw on the door again, so basically the dog has a pretty big backyard that, you know, the dog can go around, can sniff all the smells, can dig up dirt, can go fight with some squirrels, kind of just allows the dog to be outside without any supervision or anything like that. And for that, you know, the dog has also not ever tried to escape before. So one of these days when the dog was let outside, it had been a couple hours and it was about time for, you know, Gabby to walk the dog. So Gabby looks around the house and is like, okay, well, the dog was probably in the backyard and he goes downstairs and goes to the backyard and the backyard's empty. So Gabby like walks out and really looks around, right? She looks around the corners, she looks behind the trees, she looks in the bushes, and that's when, you know when you like have lost something or someone, if it's your dog, but especially for me when I've lost like my wallet or something, or my phone or something, and you start looking around, and you get, start getting that really terrible feeling knowing that it's lost, and you just, you, you continue to, like, look at all these places. Like, you continue to look under things, and you continue to look, even though you know that there's, like, no chance that they're there. Like, I'll look in drawers I've never opened for years, being like, please be in here, even though it's obviously not, right? And you just get that sinking feeling of, you know, it's gone. And Gabby was getting that feeling of, like, oh my god, oh my god. My dog's gone. Like, where's my dog? So immediately, you know, she calls up her mom and her mom is like out somewhere. She's like, mom, mom, I think the dog escaped. And, and her mom's like, what? That, the dog's never ran away. And Gabby's like, I don't know what happened, but she's not here. 
So Gabby's mom immediately rushes back, and while Gabby's mom is coming back to the house, Gabby once again is just kind of going, looking again, looks in the backyard again, looks throughout the house again, walks around the block, kind of like the walk that they normally do, like the walk that she normally brings the dog on. The dog is nowhere to be seen. So when Gabby's mom comes back, they both are kind of like, oh my God, what's going on? And Gabby's mom's like, okay, well, your dog probably hasn't gone that far. I mean, maybe, but like, a small little dog. How far could it have really have gone? Probably just got confused and lost, and this is walking around. So Gabby and Gabby's mom start, like, going around the neighborhood in their car, looking around. Once again, they're just kind of, like, driving around, looking for the dog. Gabby has the window rolled down, yelling its name out. I don't know. We can give it a name. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Give it a name or something. I, I, I don't know. Anyways, so they're driving around. And, you know, Gabby's mom's like, um, I'm going to keep driving and looking. If you want to just, like, start scouting out yourself, like, I don't, I don't really know what to do. I'm going to go on, like, Facebook and post on, like, the neighborhood group the like, photos of her dog saying, like, have you seen this dog? We have not, like, she escaped or something like that. Gabby's like, all right, well, just let me know if, like, anyone knows anything or just, because, like, Gabby was freaking out right now. This was her dog. This was her little baby. And, this dog has never ran away. This dog has never even attempted to run away. This dog is hesitant doing a different, like, path. Like, the dog loves routine. Why would it change it up? It just didn't make a lot of sense to Gabby. And later, and, or, I mean, if you can see the title of this video, you'll know exactly why it made no sense. So within, very soon, you will see one of the craziest things that a Karen has ever done. But real quick, if you made it as far into the video, comment Karen down below. I'll try and hard a bunch of comments that say that. And also, if you do want to support the channel, uh, all you got to do is at some point, maybe after this video, I say this every time, by the way, or maybe later, um, sit down and watch a bunch of videos, or as I say, binge watch the videos, maybe watch one, two, three, whatever. And let me know what you're doing while watching the videos. Are you like playing a video game? Are you drawing, animating, cleaning your room? Or do these videos help you go to sleep? I no longer take offense to that because I watch, uh, I watch like King of the Hill to go to sleep. I actually like that show, man. It's like, it's a good show. I actually like it. Anyway, anyways, anyways, let's just get back to the story. Stuff, stuff's getting interesting. So Cabby is like going around the neighborhood. She's kind of like doing a like job or jog or whatever, yelling out the name of the dog, going around, going around. And that's when... That's when she hears a bark, and you might be thinking, all right, bro, it's a bark. <laughs> like, come on. Dog barks kind of sound the same. However, Gabby was convinced that that was the bark of her dog, so she immediately starts yelling the name again, and she hears the bark again. So she starts to try and, like, figure out where this bark is coming from. She tries to, like, locate the source of, like, the noise. Because, yes, it could be another dog, but this is the first lead that she's gotten ever since her dog was gone. There's not a single other clue or lead or anything. So she's like, screw it, I'm taking this, I'm putting all my chips in. And Gabby, like, goes in the direction of the bark, and it gets her to this house. It's very, very strange, right? And she looks in the backyard of this house, and there's, like, a, the, the only thing that's, like, whole, like between, like, Gabby and the backyard is this row of, like, these shrubs, right? So Gabby kind of, like, pries the shrubs apart because she hears the barking from the backyard. And that's when she sees a dog sitting in the backyard, right, barking. And it's a little white dog. And Gabby's like, okay, I can't be 100% sure. But and in the middle of her thought, the dog kind of, like, moves its head and Gabby sees the collar that's still on the dog. The collar is like a red and black stripe one, and it's the one that Gabby's dog had on before it, like, the dog was abducted, basically. And Gabby's like, there is no way that at this point, this is a coincidence. And this is when Gabby is starting to realize, why is this dog here? Did he sneak through? Like, well, what happened? And that's when Gabby is about to go into the backyard when she hears a door open. So she doesn't push her way into the backyard, but she can, continues to watch. And she hears a door open, and she hears someone walk out. And someone walks out with a bowl of water and puts it down. And guess who it is? It's the Karen. And Gabby's like, oh my god. Oh my god. So anyways, Gabby like kind of retreats for a second, stays behind the shrubs so she can't be seen takes out her phone and sends a message to her mom, explains like massive blocks of text explaining everything. And then also follow, follows it up by like, I can't call right now. 
I think I'm going to try and get the dog. I don't want to be caught, right? So sends the messages, closes out her phone, and is kind of just waiting. So Scabby, like, you know, looks in and sees that, like, you know, the, the door is closed, so the Karen is no longer in the backyard. But Gabby is also aware that, you know, the that there's a lot of windows, that, you know, movement in the backyard, that the dog, you know, Gabby's dog will probably start barking a lot and making a lot of noise when Gabby comes to pick the dog up because, like, the dog's going to be so excited to see that Gabby's there to pick him up. Stuff like that, right? So Gabby's like, all right, I kind of got one shot with this. So Gabby kind of like pushes through the shrubs. It's kind of difficult. And Gabby's looking around and she sees like, you know, she's like, all right, I'm going to have to like really like really like sprint, right? I'm going to have to really send it like when I get the dog because going through these shrubs are going to be hard or whatever. She pushes through like the bushes and she's fully through. And all of a sudden, she hears a barrage of barking. It's her dog. Her dog's running up to her, kind of basically jumps into her arms. The dog has had a terrible day. It was abducted by someone, right? Apparently, it must have been that the Karen somehow broke into the backyard of Gabby's house. Because, like, right, the Karen now knew where Gabby lived after they had that interaction. And probably scouted out her house and probably went back another day, another day noticed the dog was there, and then either picked it up that day or a later day, kind of like broken or whatever. So Gabby, reunited with her dog, is about to turn around when she hears, Stop! And Gabby turns around again. And sure enough, the door is wide open and the Karen is standing there. And Gabby yells like, why did you steal my dog? And the Karen's like, I didn't steal anything. I was just doing, you know, the service that as a dog owner should. Like, I was taking that dog away from the horrible life that he had with you, obviously, by the way it acted, the way it lashed out to me. It was lashing out in pain. It needed me to save it. And Gabby's like, first of all, that's ridiculous. My dog simply barked at you, probably because it realized that you were a dog kidnapper. Second of all, you can't go around stealing dogs. You can't be doing that. That's not your place. That's not your place to choose these things. And the Karen is like, I did what I know is right. And now I will do what I know is right by taking that dog back. So Gabby is like, oh, hell nah, bro. Turns around, pushes through the bushes really quickly. And the Karen's like, no, get back here. And Gabby's like all the way through except her leg when she feels a tug. And sure enough, right, she feels two hands on her leg. And she's trying to pull through the bushes, right? And the Karen's like, get back here. And the Karen is legitimately pulling on her leg because she's like in between the line of bushes. And then Gabby starts shaking her leg, shaking it. And then the Karen loses grip. She pulls through. Gabby kind of falls forward a little bit, but lets go of the dog before she like lands on the dog. The, lo the dog jumps down and starts barking or whatever. Gabby picks the dog back up and starts running. And that's when Gabby's like, all right, I think I lost her. So Gabby pulls out her phone, calls up her mom, and her mom's like, oh my God, what happened? She's like, I just like picked up the dog from the crazy Karen's house. I'm at 123 uh, El 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 Elmer Street or whatever. Like, can you come pick me up? And that's when Gabby's like, actually, mom, um, uh, I'm going to need you to come here kind of quick. I, I don't know where the Karen is. Wait, mom, uh, I'm going to have to get back to you. And her mom's like, what? Gabby, what's going on? What's going on? Because that's when Gabby, like, she thought that she, because she can outrun the Karen, right? But that's when she starts seeing a car coming at her. And sure enough, looking into the windshield, it is the Karen driving that car. So Gabby starts running, right? And Gabby starts running, hops a fence, goes into another backyard. Dogs that are chained up in that backyard start, like, yelling or screaming or yelling start barking at her gabby jumps another fence and she sees like she hears a car go turns a corner right she's like oh shoot she's on me so gabby goes in and she finds the dog park right because the dog park's really close to where the karen lives and kind of close to where gabby lives gabby runs into the dog park and obviously you can't drive a car into the dog dog park so karen parks gets out and that's when gabby calls her mom again she's like the karen is chasing me at the car and gabby's mom's like oh my god this is insane she's like mom i'm at the dog park I need you to idle at, you know, 748, like, East Street, because that's, like, the other side of the park. The park's actually really large. So what Gabby was going to do is she was going to, like, lead the Karen through the park, and Gabby's mom was supposedly going to be at the other side of the park and was going to be waiting for her, right? And then, like, she'd jump in the car and get away. And Gabby's mom's like, I'll be there in, like, 
two minutes. It's really close, right? So Gabby starts running through the park. And, you know, she sees the Karen far away. But the Karen's coming at her kind of like speed power walking or whatever and yelling at her the entire time, being like, come back here, come back here. So Gabby's running, 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 gets to the end of the park, doesn't see her mom's car, and she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. The Karen starts approaching slowly but surely. Like, if her mom isn't here in the next two to three minutes, the Karen will catch up. And as the Karen's getting closer and closer and closer, Gabby sees her mom's car pull up, and she just runs the other side, gets in, comes in, and Gabby's mom's like, oh my god, what? And Gabby's like, no time, go, go, go. So Gabby's mom, you know, gets in the car, drives off, and the Karen's yelling the whole time. So, you know, Gabby and Gabby's mom drive around for a little bit before they go back home. Gabby explains literally everything, and, you know, the, uh, you know, Gabby's mom's like, all right, well, um, first of all, we should probably get some of the fence in our backyard now so that that can't happen. Um, we should install, like, a security camera. And then also, c- can we call the police? So Gabby's mom actually calls, like, the non-emergency line, so not 911, but the other one, explains the situation. They said, wow, like, that's insane. Like, do you, can you give a description, like, of this woman? Because we'll go talk to her. Basically explain that, like, if she does something like this again, there will be consequences. So Gabby starts explaining, like, what this woman looks like. And they're like, oh, Shelby, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And Gabby's like, you know this woman? And the non-emergency police officer was like, yes, we get calls about her, like, every week. She's the worst. But this is probably one of the worst things she's ever done. So we're going to go to her for this time and say that, like, next time she does anything, like, that's it. And they're like, actually, thank you for telling us this. She's been causing problems for years now, and now we finally have a reason to tell her, like, it's done. It's over. So you might be thinking that this story is over and that things are going to be good, right? But no. Because when Gabby and Gabby's mom start driving by their house, they see... They, they see, because, like, you know when you pull up to your house, you're pulling up by the, like, the so there's, like, a sidewalk that leads by Gabby's house, and they're pulling up to their house, and that's when they see someone walking on the sidewalk up to their house. And Gabby's like, go by our house. Keep going. Keep going. And Gabby's mom's like, why? And she's like, that's the Karen. So the Karen was literally walking to Gabby's house. So Gabby's mom and Gabby, you know, they start driving around again. They're like, oh, my God, this is insane. And Gabby's mom calls up the non-emergency line again. And they're like, hey, how can we help you? And, and they say, hey, we're the people who called in like a minute ago talking about the dog and the, the old woman, right? And they're like, hey, so we don't know what to do because she is walking up to our house right now. And the non-emergency line's like, okay, well, I guess if we're going to confront this woman, might as uh, doesn't really matter where. So they send a police officer up to the house and, you know, Gabby and Gabby's mom, like, start idling, like, kind of far away from the house, but within sight. And they see the police officer pull, like, pull up to their house. And they see the Karen waiting outside. And that's when Gabby and Gabby's mom drive closely, drive into the driveway, and get out. So there's a police officer, the Karen, Gabby, Gabby's mom, and Gabby's dog, right? It's a, it's, it's a party, bro. It's going to be so hype. I'm kidding. Anyways, though. So the, so the Karen starts pointing. She says, I know that this little girl is a terrible dog owner. And yes, sure, I broke into their backyard and stole their dog, but I did it for good reasons. And the police officer's like, ma'am, so you admit to doing that? She said, yes, but I do in the name of good dog owners. And the police officer's like, ma'am, what? <laughs> like, he wasn't even trying to be like, ex- like, explain what you're doing. He's just like, bro, what? But sure enough, right, um, you know, Gabby is like, yeah, she, this, this woman broke in and like I had to go into her backyard to steal my dog back and she was chasing me. The police officer's like, ma'am, turns to Karen, like we've had to deal with you for years. There have been cases and cases of you overstepping, but this time you overstepped way too far, right? You know, there's no charges. These, these nice ones, like these people could very easily press charges. By the way, they clarified they don't want to press charges earlier. And the police officer said, But if you do one more thing, and anything, any complaint comes in, our department is going to deal with this ourselves. Because you've caused too much stress, too much turmoil, too much damage to this community by all the acts you've done. Especially this one. This is insane. You broke into this young girl. Why do you think she's a bad dog owner? And the Karen's like, well, her dog barked at me. And the police officer's like, what?! Is that it? And she's like, well, and he says, no, no, this is insane. 
You broke into this, this family's house and you stole something of theirs. You robbed them. This is ridiculous. The fact that they're not pressing charges, in my, my opinion, is ridiculous. But if you do one more thing, this department will use all of our resources to make sure that you are no longer a menace to this community. And the Karen is completely deflated at this point. It's like, I understand, sir, and walks away. The police officer is like, guys, if you have any other sightings of this woman, right, please send them in. We'll do everything, right? And, you know, uh, Gabby's mom's like, well, we're getting a better backyard. We're also installing security cameras or motion sensor cameras that'll take videos of anything. And if she's in the backyard again, We'll also have proof and we'll come in for sure. And the, and the police officer's like, thank you for reporting this. This is insane. She's been a menace for years, but I promise like if anything ever happens again, not even just with you guys, but in general with her, she will no longer be a problem to any of you guys. And they thank the police officer. They go back home and, you know, Gabby just spends some Click on the video on screen right dog. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. How's it going, everyone? Today, we got a story submitted by a subscriber of a crazy Karen who steals her pet cat. I know you guys will enjoy today's story, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Ava. So anyways, right, Ava had a cat, and Ava's had this cat for a very long time. It was one of those pets that she got when she was much younger, so she doesn't totally, so but she didn't get the cat when she was, like, born, but the cat's been her life basically since she can remember. Ava's around 12 at this point, and she got the cat when she was, like, 4 or 5 or something like that. So this cat is pretty close to Ava. There's also been rumors of this lady who lives in her neighborhood, and these rumors have been spread by other kids, you know, parents have talked a little bit between each other, but for the longest time, Ava Ava only thought of these, and Ava's parents only told her that these were simply rumors. What were these rumors, you might be asking? Well, the rumors were of this lady, who was just called as the crazy cat lady, and we will call the Karen, the crazy cat Karen, right? So anyways, the crazy cat Karen was rumored to have so many cats, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's the way that she was rumored to have gotten these cats, which is the bad thing. She has been rumored, or Ava was told by her friends, and you know, her friends are saying, oh my god, the werewolves are coming out at 2 in the morning tonight, Ava, be careful. So there's a lot of disinformation coming from these, you know, these other children, right? As it, as that happens, it happens. Um, but uh, this time, they actually were correct. The story goes that the reason why the crazy cat Karen had so many cats was not because she went to, like, I don't know, Petco or adopted so many cats that needed it. It's because she would go around in the neighborhoods surrounding her, so, like, near Ava's neighborhood and all the other neighborhoods and, you know, suburbs or whatever that were near um, where the crazy cat Karen lived, and she'd go along and she would, like, stock out families' pets, specifically cats, and once she found a family's pets or a family's cats that she really liked, she would wait for the perfect opportunity, steal the cat, and never be seen from again. And this is kind of like one of those, Ava kind of thought it was like one of those, like, I don't know, like one of those horror stories, like, ooh, if you look in the mirror and say Bloody Mary three times, she's gonna come out and get you. It's like, okay, okay. Settle down, Jeremy. It's not actually real. And Ava thought that this, uh, you know, the crazy cat Karen stories were kind of under the same guard of like, oh, it's like, come on now. It's, you can't be serious when you say that. So one, another thing, this, actually, no, not another thing. So this all, like, this story happened when Ava was like 11, 12, something like that. And it was like, I don't know. It was in the summertime, she was off from school, and uh, one thing that, you know, Ava did every single day was she let the cat go outside, you know, it, there's a litter box in the house, but, you know, she, tr she let the cat have some outdoor time. Maybe wanted to go to the bathroom, maybe just wanted to, I don't know, exist outside. There, a lot of cats really only stay inside, and Ava didn't, like, walk her cat around the block like a dog with a leash or something. But Ava, you know, let the cat go outside. And the cat was good enough that the cat was never going to just, like, run away. The cat, more or less, always stayed very close to the house, always stayed very close to Ava. And every single day, you know, Ava would walk outside with a cat. 
And so what, one day, one day on the summer when Avery was around 12, she was outside with her cat. And uh, it was just a very normal day, a very normal time of just like, you know, she went out with her cat, everything was very normal, nothing was out of the ordinary, as of now, of course. Because Ava was kind of standing there, she was looking around, and she was kind of just, uh, she noticed something. She noticed that there was this woman who was walking on the other side of the street, the other side of the street from her house. Uh, But the thing was, this woman, who was older, and had these, like, glasses on or whatever was staring at Ava's house and very specifically her front lawn and who was in the front lawn Ava and her cat so it was very difficult to see where this old lady was staring because she had very big and thick uh, sunglasses on but it was very clear the direction that this old lady was staring in so anyways Ava notices this but she doesn't really pay super close attention to it, or it doesn't stay long in her memory until following events happen, as you will soon see, and she, you know, refers back to this later on. But she does say that she finds it quite, she found it kind of st- quite strange how the old lady would slow down, almost to like a near stop, but like a very slow shuffle that really didn't get her anywhere. And she was just staring almost intensely. It was difficult to see if it actually was intensely or not. Because, I mean, it's hard to tell with sunglasses on. But she almost, she almost came to a standstill as she was walking outside and looking at Ava's front lawn. Ava's felt a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, she didn't feel too out of the... It didn't feel too out of the ordinary at first. Because, I don't know, like, old people doing slightly strange things. That's not, that's not like, wow, revelation new discovery has been made. Old people sometimes will do things that are a little bit strange. Come on now. But anyways, things got more peculiar. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I just woke up. So uh, things got stranger, okay? Stranger things. Uh, By the way, this this, uh, story's on Spotify. First link in the description if you like listening on Spotify. But things got really strange on the second day of the story. So the second day, it was a very regular day once again. And once again, Ava was out with her cat. And once again, she saw the old lady walk by. And last time, she kind of slowed down almost to a stop as she was looking over at Ava and her cat. But this time, she completely stopped. And she wasn't even walking in the direction anymore of like going straight. She turned 90 degrees to be facing towards Ava and her cat. And Ava saw this, like, in the corner of her eye, and she was very uncomfortable. So she was just, like, playing with her cat in the front yard, trying her best not to make eye contact with this lady who was just staring her down. It was so weird and uncomfortable, and just such a strange experience that Ava was just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm just not going to make eye contact, and she's going to go away. And after what was probably like 30 seconds to a minute, but felt like hours to her, eventually the who we the the lady, we don't know who she is yet, right? Eventually walks away. And Ava says something to her mother about this at dinner time. So they're sitting down, you know, Ava's mother, you know, made I I don't know what she made, but she made something. And Ava says, Hey, like something weird happened today, and Ava's mother was like, Yeah, what's what happened? And she's like there was this, like, lady yesterday that, you know, walked by the house and seemed to be staring at, you know, me and my cat and probably says the cat's name, but I'm not going to give the cat a name as I will get way too confused way too quickly and you guys will be very upset at me in the comments as always. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, she's staring at me and my cat. And I didn't think much of it because, you know, stuff like that might happen. But today, the same lady came by and she seemed to be staring longer and more intensely. And I don't know, Mom, it's just kind of weird. And at that point, they had completely, they didn't even, they didn't put two and two together with the rumors of the, you know, the crazy cat Karen who steals people's cats and, you know, this random woman coming by and looking at, you know, looking at the cats. And, I mean, it, it's like, I, I, it's understandable because it's like, remember, 
uh, Ava and her parents had put the rumor of the crazy cat Karen in the same category as the boogeyman and the Loch Ness Monster, right? You see a splash in your local pond, you're not going to be like, oh, yep, it's uh, underwater vampires. I knew it. I knew it. They're real. You're not going to make that connection, right? But things get extremely, extremely intense on the third day. And this is where everything happens. If you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below. I'm just curious to see how many of you guys made it this far. So anyways, on the third day, right, uh, Ava's outside with her cat. As always, she does this every single day. She likes having daily outdoor time with the cat because, like, you know, some cats live 100% inside, but, you know, sometimes they want to get outside. So Ava's out there, and for some reason, right, there is... Ava is separated from her cat for a second. I think Ava turned around to do something, and the cat kind of wandered towards the edge of the lawn, which was totally fine, and in most situations would have been completely fine um, because the cat would have never ran away um, or has never, and the cat is allowed to walk to any point of the lawn that it wants to. So the fact that you know the cat walked further towards the curb is not an issue. However, there had been a car idling there. It was very strange. It was like, it was, wasn't parked, it was still on, and Ava noticed it, but she couldn't see who was in the car, so she just thought, oh, okay, maybe it's my neighbors, because they had, like, teenage neighbors or whatever, or parents with teenagers as neighbors, so, oh, maybe it's just one of their friends, and they're getting something inside, so they want to leave the car on, but they're going to hop out, right? Doesn't even... It doesn't even, like, you know, think of it like that. But as soon as Ava is on, like, the other side of the lawn and the cat has wandered towards the the sidewalk side of the lawn, if that makes a sense, someone walks out of the car very quickly, or as quickly as an older lady can go, snatches up Ava's cat, and that's when the cat, like, yell, like kind of, like, lets out a bit of, like, a meow yelp. And at this point... You know, Ava turns around and she sees the lady from the last two days. And she, you know who she sees in her hands? Her cat. The, this random lady has stolen Ava's cat. And this lady turns around, doesn't jump into the car. Remember, she's like 65 or something. She's not jumping into anything. And she's not an athletic 65 by no measures. She fumbles back into the car, right? And uh, the dr she closes the door and, like, drives off. It, within, like, 30 seconds or less, Ava, oh, at the very beginning of that 30-second interval, she was, like, with her cat, and she turns away for a second. By the end of the 30-second interval, this the cat is gone. Her cat is gone. Some random woman has stolen her cat, and they drove away. However... The car is extremely distinct. It is a red car with, like, blue stripes. Like, I don't know if you're going to go around kidnapping cats that if you want the most distinct car on planet Earth. I mean, I have personally never seen a red car with blue stripes in my life, but maybe the crazy cat Karen had a specific style that she liked, and it was red cars with blue stripes on them. Um, so... Ava immediately runs back into the house and is like, well, kind of in tears, of course, 12 year old and your cat was just brutally abducted by an old lady. Runs in the house, is basically screaming to her mom what happened. Her mom like runs out with her. It's like, what happened? What happened? Eventually Ava gets it out, says everything that happened. You know, her mom's just like, what? And, uh, you know, they, you know, Ava's mom walks over to the neighbor's house, rings the doorbell and basically tweet it. Uh, I almost said tweets out. Sorry, a lot of Twitter notifications. Rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth II. Just got a thousand notifications that she died, so yikes. Um, I didn't mean yikes. I'm sorry. I'm doing this in one take. It, delete anything that came out weird. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to edit that. I don't have the time to edit. A anyways, not to derail literally everything in this video, but they go over to the neighbor's house, and the neighbor's like, yeah, there was a car idling outside, and it seemed to drive away quickly basically confirming what Ava was saying. So Ava's mom is, like, freaked out. I mean, she's not just freaked out, but she feels terrible for her, uh, you know, um, 
Sorry, Shalat tweeted out something pretty funny. Not at the time. Um, she feels terrible because, like, her cat is gone. But this was really Ava's cat? You know, this was really, um, this wasn't really her cat. This was, like, Ava's first response. This was, like, Ava's pet, right? It was a family pet, but it really was Ava's pet. So for the next week, remember, an entire week goes by. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The entire week goes by. And there's not a sign of Ava's cat. At this point, you know, Ava's basically grieving for the entire week. And Ava's parents are kind of trying to figure out a way to tell her that the cat's not, probably not going to be coming back. It's like when you lose, I've never lost a pet, thank God. But when I see those, you know, those posters for lost pet, after about 48 hours, the probability of you getting your pet back, just the half-life is terrible. It just shoot, it falls down so quickly, right? And at this point, Ava and her mom, Ava's mom is trying to get Ava's, you know, attention off of her cat. It's a very sad situation. No one likes to see anything like that. And Ava's mom is very desperately trying to, like, find a way to make, you know, her daughter feel better about everything that's been going down. So Ava's mom is just like, okay, you know, hey, you know, Ava, like, do you want to go to the park today? Ava, very, still very distraught, you know still very upset and almost in a state of mourning but also at this point Ava you know she's 12 she's a lot of confidence a lot of optimism a lot of hope in the world Ava's not convinced that her cat is gone forever but she's still very sad very rattled you know she says yeah mom sure I'd love to go to the park so they get in the car and they drive and they drive for like 20 minutes right and they happen to be in a neighboring town they happen to be you know they happen to be driving in a neighboring town, which is close to them, but also happens to be where the park is. And this is very important that Ava remembered the very distinct car. Because Ava, you know how you're in a long car ride? And I did this especially when I was a kid and especially when I didn't have a phone. I would just sit there and kind of like stare out, you know, the window and look at all the cars. Sometimes I would play like, you know, if there's a bunch of... Uh, you know, a telephone wires, I would play the fake guy running on the telephone wires in my imagination or whatever. Honestly, God, I still do that sometimes, but y you know what I mean. She was just like, had her eye, she was just looking out. And she sees, you know, they're, wa they're kind of going through like this neighborhood. She sees a red car with blue stripes in the exact, the exact pattern that she saw before. She yells up to her mom, pull over. And her mom, not going to question it, she's also not on the highway or in a situation where she couldn't pull over, pulls over, like, a block past that house. She's like, Mom, I saw the car. And Ava's mom's like, Ava, like, you, I think you're just imagining things. And Ava's like, Mom, no, you don't understand. It is a, it is a red car with blue stripes. Like, genuinely, like, I swear, like, it is the car I need to go now. Ava's mom was having a lot of pushback. One, she thought that Ava was just a seeing things, or B, it was a coincidence. And also, two, she doesn't want Ava, like, running up to some random house, right? And Ava's like, Mom, Mom, please, I need at least let me go and see the car. At least let me go to verify it myself. So Ava actually had a bit more of a plan, but she didn't want to let her mom know because her mom definitely would not have been a fan of the plan. But Ava was telling her mom, look, just let me, just let me go and look at the car to see if it's actually it. Ava's actual plan was to check a little, do a little bit more investigation than she was leading on. So sure enough, right, um, you know, a Ava's mom, after a lot of talking back and forth, is like, fine, you can go and do that. But, you know, I don't, like, this is dangerous. Like, please don't, like, get yourself in any trouble. Which uh, Ava yeah, got herself in a little bit of trouble. But we're getting to that. In we'll get to that in a second. So anyways, Ava, you know, at this point is just like, you know, she gets out of the car. Her mom's at the very end of the, uh, at the end of the block. And Ava walks down. And sure enough, in the driveway is the car. It's the car of the crazy cat Karen 100%. It is the exact same pattern, and there's just not a lot. This isn't like, I don't know, a, a, a Ford F-150, like, I don't know, gray color. It's not like a bajillion of those cars on the highway or something. Or it's not like, I don't know. But it is a very specific 
red with blue striped car. So she looks at it, and then Ava looks in the window, and you know who she sees in the window? Her cat! Her cat and her make eye contact, and the cat is looking at her like, there's no way this is, like, my owner or whatever, or friend, or whatever you want to say. Like, that's impossible. The, the cat is, like, looking at her, and Ava's looking at the cat. Ava's like, I don't know for 100% sure, but I, but no, I have, like, I have a gut feeling that is 100% my cat. So Ava runs up to the house, to the dismay of her mom, who is parked all the way down, so her mom can't, like, get out and yell at her or anything. She runs up all the way to the front of the house. And she grabs the door, and she tries to open it, and it just opens. The door isn't locked. There's no nothing like that. Ava is not going to knock and be like, Hello, crazy, insane Karen who stole my cat. May I have my cat back, please? I will give you $5 as a token of my gratitude. My lord and say, yeah, She's not going to do that. So Ava runs into the house, runs into the room that she thinks she sees her cat in, and she makes eye contact with her cat. Her cat immediately jumps into her arms. It's like 100% guarantee that this is her cat at this point. She's staring at her cat, who she started to believe that she was never going to see again, right? She started to believe that she was never going to see this cat again. And she's just looking at this cat. The cat has jumped into her arms. However, Ava also, as she's, Ava, like, grabs the cat, walks out, and is about to walk out of the house when she looks up a flight of stairs. And at the very top of the flight of stairs is the crazy cat, Karen. And the crazy cat Karen says, get back here. And the crazy cat Karen starts waddling down the stairs. Ava bolts it, bolts out of the house, sprints out of that house, bro. She's out of there so fast, runs down the street, meets up. And her mom's like, kind of like yelling inside the car or whatever. And, you know, as Ava like opens up the door, she looks behind her. The Karen has left her house and is on the street, kind of like waddle sprinting. I don't know how else to describe it besides very slowly walking intently towards her. So she gets in the car, jumps in, yells at her mom, go, go, go. Her mom, who's just like acting on inf- on like reflexes, is just like not even questioning it, hits the gas, they go, and Ava's mom's like, Ava, I told you not to go into that house. Like, that's so dangerous. I, that woman is very clearly, like, mentally ill. Like, what if she did something insane to you? And Ava just is, like, not even paying attention. Because you know what? Ava got her cat back. And uh, that's all that matters here, man. Ava got her Click cat on the video back. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Look, Karens are the worst. And they believe that they can never be wrong. In today's story, the Karen accuses the subscriber of faking her service dog and actually goes as far as to call the cops. This is just so insane, so let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story, Ellie. So anyways, right, you know, Ellie has a service dog. And I'm not exactly, I wasn't given uh, the exact reason for why, and that's totally fine. All I was told was that the service dog was not because Ellie was blind and not, not because Ellie was deaf but for a different reason. And uh, that's all we need to know, uh, but we do, but just for context, the service dog was legitimate, which the Karen did not believe, but we'll get to that in a second. So anyways, this story all happens one day when Ellie goes to the park. And one thing that Ellie, there's a nice park in her neighborhood. It's very big, spacious, a lot of things to do. So Ellie likes going there with her service dog because one, it's good for her, and two, it's good for the dog. Dog gets some exercise, you love to see it. This all happens one day when the Karen, a Karen, is mixed into the equation. And you already know that this is just room for disaster at this point. So anyways, right, uh, sure enough, you know, she's while Ellie's there with her service dog, and they're just walking as normal. And this Karen comes up to her. And the Karen does the respectful thing in this case, well, is respectful up until this point, and asks politely, may I pet your dog? So this is just a genuinely a good idea in general for all of you guys to do. It doesn't matter if the dog's a service dog or not. Whenever there's a dog, you should always, before you go and pet it, you should always ask the owner of the dog, may I pet your dog? Because who knows? The dog might not be good with people and might bite you, or maybe it'll get really scared and 
It's like traumatic, the random stranger comes reaching at it, right? I can totally understand why some dogs don't like it. And you know, it's a little sad because when you see a nice fluffy dog and you just want to go ahead and give it a nice pet and tell it's a good boy, look, I get it, I understand. But at the end of the day, it's just important for you to like ask the owner of the dog. And the Karen in this case did something good. From this point on, the Karen will not be doing anything good, but at least she did one thing good. So the thing about like service dogs is in most cases, you're not supposed to pet them because they have like a job that they need to do or whatever and they need to focus or I don't totally know the reasons, but I just know that's the case. So uh, yeah, Ellie explains pretty uh, calmly and just like, oh, sorry, no, I can't, like, no. And gives the reason, which is a total legitimate reason. But let's not forget who we're dealing with here. We are dealing with a Karen. And if you ever tell a Karen no, or tell her that she's wrong, you're just in room for trouble, dude. So the Karen looks at her with this kind of expression of like, did you just say no to me right now? And look, I get it. It's like unfortunate, bro. I, I want to pet the cute dog too. Like I get it. And yeah, you were just told no. And it's always a little awkward when you like nicely ask and you don't think it's a big deal and the person says no. But obviously one, even if it wasn't a big deal, even if this wasn't a service dog, just respect the answer of the dog owner. And two, there is a good reason, right? There is a very good reason. And also like the Karen probably noticed like the, cause like service dogs tend to wear vests or whatever that say, hey, like, this is a service dog, it's on job or whatever, so please don't pet it. So there was a very big sign saying, do not pet me, like I'm a service dog, I'm doing whatever, right? And so the Karen must have been either a combination of offended and embarrassed, because she starts lashing out at Ellie, dude. She's like, that, like, what? Like, I, why can't I just pet your dog or whatever? I'm to like, you obviously like bought this vest off of Amazon and you're pretending to have it as a service dog. This isn't even a real service dog. And Ellie had never had someone say this to her because it's kind of ridiculous. Like, why would you fake a service dog, bro? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And also like, why also, even if you think someone is, for whatever reason, why would you go up to them and be like, your service dog is fake? Like, bro, that literally makes no sense at all. Like, why would you even do that? So Ellie looks at her and is like, no, like, there's a legitimate reason. And, you know, Ellie doesn't want to go into the legitimate reason because, you know, some of that stuff is personal. Like, some of the medical information or whatever is personal. That's totally fair. That's totally fair. Like, that's totally fair. And the Karen's like, nope, I don't believe you. You are faking it. You are a big faker. Wah, wah, wah. So Ellie is just like, okay, like, there's obviously, like, Obviously, I'm not going to get anywhere in this conversation. Like, I'm not going to get somewhere valuable at the end of this conversation. So why am I even having it right now? So Ellie's like, okay, ma'am, well, I got to go. And Karen's like, don't think you're getting out of this that quickly. You know it's illegal to fake a service dog, which I don't know if it is actually illegal to fake a service dog. It probably is because you're faking something that is like, I think regulated by the government and given out by certain organizations. So I think just in general, if you say the government said something and they didn't, that's probably against a law, but also dude, what? So the Karen is like, I, you are gonna stay right here until I get a, a government official to verify this because I know for a fact that you are faking this service dog. And at this point, like Ellie's just like rolling her eyes. She's like, bro, you cannot be serious right now. Like, or, <laughs> like dude, it's, I'm not faking the service dog. And the Karen is like, yes, you are. And you will wait right here when I go and find someone. And the Karen walks away. And Ellie's just waiting for her, for the Karen to fully walk away so that Ellie can just walk in the other direction. Like she's not gonna wait there for the Karen to go find a quote unquote government official. Like, dude, what do you even mean by that? Like, are you gonna go? It's not like, I don't know, a government building is on the park grounds. Like this Karen has to like get into her car, drive around, get to city hall. And obviously like, I don't know if you guys have ever had to deal with like a bureaucracy in the government. Dude, you're not gonna get a hold of someone right away. They're not gonna be like, oh, citizen, you want something right now to deal with your problem? Oh, of course, we will happily give it to you right away. You definitely don't have to wait in line for days or book an appointment a year in advance. Of course not. This is a well-functioning organization. Okay, that was sarcasm, but look, she knew the Karen was not gonna be back for a while. So she dips, and also why would she stay? Even if the Karen was gonna come back in three minutes, there's literally no reason for her to have to like prove it. The thing is though, I Ellie tells me that there's some kind of like I 
some kind of like, she had something on her that was like proof for the sake of the story because I wasn't given specific details on what it was. I'm going to say it's like an ID card that proves that the service dog's legit. I don't know if that's a real thing, but I don't know exactly what it is. So for the sake of the story, you get an ID card, okay? It might be something slightly different, but for this, for, for intents and purposes of telling the story, it's an ID card. So anyways, Ellie had proof on her, but she knew for a fact that like the Karen would be like, you fake that as well, because if the Karen's willing to go out of her way to say that she faked an actual service dog, why would she stop at saying that she faked a service dog and not also a card for a service dog? And then there's just no point in having the conversation. So Ellie walked the other way, kind of like, um, it's, it's unfortunate because the Karen definitely ruined that day, but Ellie was gonna let, you know, she, Ellie was not gonna let this Karen stop her from enjoying her life and having fun. So the next day comes around, right? The next day comes and uh, she walks, she goes back to the park. Ellie's like, I know the Karen will probably be there. And if we see the Karen again, we're just not gonna interact, talking to the dog, right? We're not gonna interact, bro. We're just not gonna do anything. We're gonna just, we're, this Karen is not gonna stop me from doing what I need to do every single day. So Ellie and the dog are in the park. And sure enough, they come in contact with the Karen again. And the Karen is like, you. So you already know that stuff's about to go down. And she's like, you ran away from me yesterday. I spent all day trying to find someone and I couldn't. So I came back to the park and you were gone. And uh, Ellie's kind of looking at the Karen like, wait, like you expected me to wait here all day for you to go and find someone to try and prove that I'm quote unquote faking my service dog right now? Like, do you seriously think that I'm gonna like waste my precious time to go ahead and like just to, to be at the very whim of your ridiculous and stupid demands? Like that's ridiculous. So Ellie just tries to keep on walking, but the Karen steps in front of her and she says, uh, 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 not this time. So at this point, the Karen's like, this time I got you. Karen whips out her phone, calls 911, demands the police arrive immediately. Doesn't really give a reason, but says it's urgent. So they just come, right? The police aren't gonna question you and be like, so what exactly are you calling about? Like they, if you call them, they, they need to come because there's a lot of situations where maybe you can't be specific or you need to be brief, but they still need to show up, right? So at this point, Ellie's like, am I in a fever dream right now? Like, is a Karen really calling the cops on me? Cause she falsely believes that I'm faking my service dog. Like no way this is legitimately happening right now. This is actually crazy. So yeah, sure enough, uh, the Karen is waiting there and she's like, don't go anywhere or I will have them chase you down and hunt you down. And at this point, Ellie, like she wanted to go. You really think Ellie wanted to be here right now dealing with this Karen? No, of course not. But Ellie also knew that this was a problem that was only going to grow and grow if she didn't deal with it because the Karen very clearly came to this park as often, if not more often, than Ellie did. Yeah, so uh, sure enough, uh, they're waiting around and the Karen is like, you really thought you were going to get away with this, but not until I showed up. And Ellie's like, ma'am, this is a legit service dog. Why would I want to fake the service dog? And the Karen's like, well, I don't know what your intentions to be a criminal would be. I don't understand why any criminals do anything criminal. And uh, Ellie's just looking at her like, that was like the least logical response you could have given to me without just saying straight up gibberish, dude. Like, what are you saying right now? So yeah, the police eventually arrive and the Karen starts clapping. She's like, yes, yes, justice will be served. Justice will be served. And Ellie's just standing there like, this is really the worst use of police time I have ever seen. Like they, I don't know, maybe something they needed to actually go and do something, but no, they needed to be here because the Karen was going to have a little mental breakdown if they, if they did not come here and prove that she's wrong. So the police come over and they're like, okay, ma'am, like what's going on? You called us, but you didn't really give us a reason. Like, what's going on here? Because they're like, they have no idea what to expect. I mean, as police coming into this situation, you get a frantic call from someone saying that they need to come. I mean, that could be a whole range of things. Someone could be stalking, attacking her, something like that. There could be a emergency, like someone needs a lot of help. Or, they need to figure out immediately what the situation's about. So the Karen goes in a long, starts a long-winded rant about why it's important to uphold the law without saying anything specific. 
So the police get pretty, like, annoyed after the Karen's like, it is important for citizens to follow the law. No matter how large or small the law is, if it is broken, it is a moral code that we all stand. Like, she goes on this really weird preachy rant about, like, oh, we must all follow the law or whatever. It was really strange and just didn't really fit the vibe. It, like, they, the police were trying to figure out exactly the details as quickly as possible. So... The Karen was midway through her speech, and, like, Ellie was literally trying to, like, she's about to leave at this point. And the police officer's like, oh, ma'am, like, with all due respect, can you just tell us why you called us? And she's like, yes. So this girl over here, and points at Ellie, and she's like, what? This girl over here is faking her service dog. This is not a legit service dog. And the police kind of look at her <laughs> with a look of, like, when you call us saying we need to be here right away frantically... That's normally like a, I'm being attacked at this very moment, come and help me type situation, not a, I have a suspicion about something that doesn't even matter, even if my suspicion is true. But since the police were already there, they were like, ah. They were like, ma'am, first of all, it really doesn't matter in this situation if this is actually a service dog or not. Yes, it is technically against the law to have something saying the government said this is a service dog and it's not, but... Is it really, did it really need our attention right now? And the Karen's like, yes, it did. And they're like, yeah, it did. And the Karen's like, arrest her immediately for breaking the law. And the police officers are like, <sighs> bro. So yeah, the police officers are pretty fed up with the Karen at this point, but they decide they, and Ellie at this point realizes that, yeah, the police officers are not on the Karen side, but Ellie could do something that could completely slam dunk on the Karen right now. She could offer up proof, undisputable proof, basically. So Ellie speaks up for the first time because she hasn't said anything in this entire incident. She said, hey, officers, my name's Ellie. This is my service dog. I don't necessarily want to disclose the reason why I have it. However, I do have proof with me. So she pulls out a service dog ID card. I don't know if that's exactly how it goes, so you can correct me in the comments, but the Ellie, the subscriber, did not necessarily say specifically what it was, but she said she had proof. So let's say it's an ID card, government ID that checks, I, I don't know. So she pulls out this card, and the, and the look on the Karen's face is absolutely priceless. Because this is when the Karen realizes that she messed up, that Ellie, in fact, has proof. Because I think at this point, the Karen was a little bit mixed between genuine, I think a little part of her did believe that Ellie was faking, but I think the majority of her, I think a big part of the Karen really was just so butthurt and upset that she wasn't able to pet the dog, or probably more likely that she was just simply told no, that the Karen decided that she was going to make a whole stink out of this thing. And she made a whole stink out of this thing without actually thinking that maybe, maybe, Ellie would actually have some proof this service dog is actually ha hers. So Ellie hands the card over to the officer. The officer looks at it for legitimately three seconds and says, yes, this checks out, ma'am. The service dog's legit, like, please don't waste your time again. And the police leave. And the Karen at this point is just so embarrassed. And then the Karen's like, oh, well, okay then. And the Karen literally, like, walks away. And Ellie's just like, wow, okay. And, uh, yeah, so Ellie goes there the next day. And the next day, she sees the Karen again. But remember, yesterday... When she went to there, when she went there, the Karen was confrontational. She was yelling at Ellie. She was like, you, like, I'm going to expose you or whatever. But this time was a little bit different. Ellie was walking in the park. She sees the Karen. The Karen turns around and starts walking in the other direction, dude. The Karen was so embarrassed to see Ellie because she, the Karen realized like how badly that they messed up. That, uh, yeah, basically the Karen was there at the park for a little bit longer, but after a while, like, the Karen would just run into Ellie so much and, like, turn around that the Karen stopped showing up to the park altogether. Hey, how's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have probably one of the craziest stories of an entitled Karen I have ever told on the channel. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you are new, 
And uh, let's call today's subscriber PJ, who submitted this story. So this all happened one summer when PJ was working at a store. So PJ was working the night shift uh, during the summer just to make some extra money. He was a teenager, and it was actually his senior, it was like last year or last school year was his senior year. So this was the summer right before college, and PJ just wanted to make a little bit of extra money. However, there wasn't a ton of job openings for the regular jobs as he kind of went around and applied kind of late and more of the fun jobs like maybe being a lifeguard or ice cream I mean those are kind of, I don't know about fun but at least I don't know a little bit more traditional those were already taken up so PJ had to take the night shift at a grocery store a lot of what he did was kind of just stocking shelves and replenishing you know shelves when they were you know out moving inventory around but also there were always a couple people that would come in kind of late and you know they'd ask for stuff and this grocery store was also it was more than a grocery store it was kind of like a lifestyle store too so they had groceries they had you know items they had items okay they had like I don't know toothpaste toothbrushes home appliances I guess it was kind of like you know how like like Target and stores like that and like Walmart too also have uh, food aisles in them. So it was kind of like one of those stores. And PJ had been working the store for about uh, two weeks and he would go in every weekday and he'd get the weekends off. And he started his shift at, at six and he ended his shift at one in the morning. He drove back home, of course. And this in about two weeks in was when he encountered, was his first encounter with the Karen. We're just going to call her the Karen for this for the rest of the story as I don't want to come up with the name and PJ never knew her name anyway so this was all happened when PJ was just actually manning the shelves he was replenishing the cereal aisle so he's putting the Captain Crunch in there I don't know replenishing the shelves and he hears a uh, ahem and he turns around and it was this woman it was a it was an older larger woman with this kind of moo moo thing on and she had like this big blouse and she was standing there and she wasn't just standing there normally she was standing there with like arms on her fists like no, arms on her fists her fists on her hips there we go she was very unhappy and you know so you know pj turned around and said hello ma'am like how can i help you because pj is a good kid he's going to do what he needs to do to perform well in his job and the, you know, the Karen was like, the customer service in this store is terrible. And uh, PJ's like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, there's not a lot of people working as it is, you know, 1130 at night, but how can I help you? And she said, the customer service in this store, reprehensible. I, 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 I just can't get around. I, I, can't, I was calling, I was calling for help and no one would come and help me. And, you know, PJ's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm really sorry that happened. Like, as I said, we are kind of like understaffed at this hour. No one really want to, no one really wants to work right now, but uh, how can I help you? And the Karen for a third time is like, it was ridiculous. Uh, no one was here to help me. It was crazy. And, you know, PJ's like, all right, well, that, that's, uh, once again, how can I help you? And Karen's like, fine. I need, uh, I need help getting the, uh, the very, very specific brand of beans. And she says like, Elmer's Beans. I don't think that's a real brand, but she said a very specific brand. And PJ in his head was like, we definitely don't sell beans that's like that brand. Like, I don't recognize it, but maybe I'm wrong. So he was like, well, ma'am, I can bring you to the beans aisle. And if they're not there, I can potentially look, you know, in, in, in our storage to see. And the Karen's like, finally, finally, boy, take me there. Take me there, young man. And sure enough, you know, PJ brings her to the uh, the beans aisle and she's like, I already came over here where there's no Elmer's beans. And PJ was like, yeah, let me let me take a look. Yeah, I don't see any Elmer's beans. Well, ma'am, there's a few things I can do. I can go in the back to see if we have any in storage. But I, if I'm being honest, I don't really remember us ever having this brand. And she's like, you, you guys don't have Elmer's beans? You don't have any Elmer's beans? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. You know what? Fine. You were no help to me anyways. I'm, I'm just going to go along my day. And... PJ in his head's like, all right, this woman's great. She's really nice. Really, really helping me out. Minimum wage employee. Definitely deserve all this. This is my fault because I run the store, apparently. And he's like, all right, ma'am. Well, sorry, sorry this didn't work out. And she's like, no, I bet you're sorry this didn't work out when you, you know, figure out what I'm about to do. And she kind of mumbles something about what she's going to do. And, you know, PJ's like, What? And she kind of waddles off, right? So PJ thinks literally nothing of it. He's like, okay, this woman, you know, she's probably a little senile. She's probably a little crabby. I mean, look, she's out grocery shopping at 1130 at night. I bet her bedtime is like 730 at night. So 
this is probably a tough day for her as it is a tough day to me. I can only be so upset. And that's when he hears kind of like rustling, a rustling noise. It's like someone kind of frantically moving through items, kind of pushing stuff. And then he hears stuff falling on the ground. And this is when he thinks, oh, no, because this has happened before where there's been kind of a display or a stand of a bunch of uh, food items or, you know, home good items. And they're kind of like stacked in a way that it's good for display, but structurally the integrity is a little compromised. So sure enough, you know, stuff has fallen over and PJ's had to deal with it before. And once again, PJ just thinks, okay, well, I, I probably, there was probably like a stack of, be- like a stack of like, I don't know, uh, canned goods that just fell over and knocked a bunch of stuff over. This is annoying. I have to go and clean it up, but sure, whatever. So PJ starts walking towards the location of the sound and he sees the old woman qu- very quickly dart out of the aisle out or out of the aisle he was approaching and going <laughs> this like really weird, like evil laugh as she ran out. And PJ was like, what the f- What? Huh? Yeah, wh- <laughs> okay, like, um, okay, and so anyways, PJ goes there, and he notices it's not, like, one pile of cans that's been knocked over, it's, like, a whole ray, it's, like, a whole swath of, like, cans and materials and goods have all been, like, pushed over onto the floor, this was not some accident, this was very clearly someone kind of took their hand and started, like, slamming stuff onto the floor, so PJ was very, very, very suspicious. He knew that this was not like an accident. He knew this was not just something falling over. He was like, okay, maybe someone bumped into it and they just, you know, they were embarrassed and they didn't want to pick it up. Fine, whatever. So as PJ is picking stuff up, he hears another crashing noise and he's like, okay, okay now, this is starting to get annoying. So PJ actually finishes putting all the stuff together, right? He finishes putting all the stuff back and he starts moving the direction of the crashing noise. However, he makes a mental note to himself that if he he hears another crashing noise, that he's gonna stop doing what he's doing and sprint over, like full sprint. And this guy's a track star. This guy has, this guy has bunny hops. He can go quickly, man. He is Usain Bolt, bro. But anyways, he's gonna speed over there as quickly as possible. So as PJ's walking over to where he thinks the pile of, like, whatever has been, you know, tossed over, he hears a crash. He knows exactly which aisle it's in. He can just hear it, and he sprints over there. And when he sprints over there, he turns the corner, and who do you think he sees? Yes, you're correct. He sees the Karen with her arm in the middle of, like, a big thing of cans, and, and he sees her push it over onto the ground and knock it over. And the Karen goes, nye, nye, nye. and then PJ's like, hey. And she turns around and she's like, so you've caught me. This is what this is what you get for not having Elmer's beans. And PJ's like, ma'am, you don't understand. I have to clean this up. And she says, nye, nye, nye. I know that. That's why I'm doing it. And he's like, and I, why? Like, I don't run this store. I don't stock this store. I don't choose what things we buy. I don't choose any of this, why are you tormenting me in particular? And she said, I know you guys have Elmer's beans, and I know that you're withholding them from me. And uh, 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 P- PJ was like, what? 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 He's like, what? Why? Why do you think that? Why? Like, what, what, can- what made you come to that conclusion? Because I know that you're hiding all the Elmer's beans in the back rooms for you. Haha, <laughs> back rooms. <laughs> and he's like, why? I don't even know what those are. She says, they were only the most delicious beans ever. And I, I've been going place to place and they're all out. And I know that the last supply was here. I know it. And I know you've been hiding them. So I'm going to continue to torture you until you give me the Elmer's beans that I deserve. And PJ is just like, oh my god. Oh, my God. So he kind of like, it's like, all right, ma'am, well, keep at that. And PJ immediately power walks to his manager's office or the supervisor who's on duty. He goes, knock, 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 knock. And he hears, come in, opens it up. He's like, hey, I got a weird situation. PJ explains everything that's been going on. And his manager's like, all right, well, I'll come and deal with this. So PJ and the manager walk over to where the woman is, and she's gone. And that's when they hear another crashing noise. And like PJ's like, all right, well, 
she's smashing something over there, and sure enough, they walk over there, and you know the frozen food aisle, so like the refrigerator doors open, and like big things of ice cream are on the floor, but also like egg cartons are on the floor, and some of the eggs are smashed. So before she was just being a nuisance, and now she's destroying the like, she's, she's destroying the produce in the store, so it's becoming an issue now. And the manager is like, ma'am, please, can you stop? We're going to ask you to leave. And the Karen says, I'm not going to leave until I get my Elmer's beans. Do you hear me, young man? This young man over here, and points to PJ, is withholding the Elmer's beans from me. He is stockpiling them in the back. And the manager is like, ma'am, I know for a fact we do not carry Elmer's beans here. And she says, you, points to the manager, you, you're in cahoots with him. You two are hoarding the Elmer's beans for yourself. And at this point, the manager looks at PJ, and PJ kind of gives him the look of like, I told you she's insane. Real quick, comment Karen if you made it this far into the video. It's the secret word of the day, and I just like seeing all the names and faces of people supporting me by giving me by watching at least halfway through the video. I really do appreciate you. And also, if you want to continue supporting the channel, literally after this video or whenever you can, sit down and watch two, three, four, whatever number of videos. I call that binge watching the videos. And in the comment section down below, let me know what you're doing while binge watching these videos. Are you, you know, drawing or doing some artwork, playing a video game, doing your laundry, uh, doing your homework, trying to go to sleep. And also let me know how many videos you watch in a row in the comment section. I'll be shouting out random people like the person on screen. So thank you to the person on screen as well as all you guys for supporting the channel so much recently. Anyways, let's get back to the story. So just a little recap at this point, PJ brought over the manager to kind of stop the situation. The Karen has escalated to not just knocking over stuff, but destroying the products, AKA the eggs that got smashed on the floor. And when the manager says that they don't carry Elmer's beans, and remember that's a standard name, I don't even think that's a real thing. The Karen starts going crazy thinking that the manager is in cahoots with PJ to keep the beans from her. No, okay, obviously that's ridiculous. But this is when the Karen said, you, both of you, you're in cahoots to keep the beans away from me. The manager's like, ma'am, that is straight up ridiculous. And she said, no, you're ridiculous. Both of you are, and you will both pay the price. And she just waddles away. And PJ turns to the manager, is like, dude, what do we do? And the manager's like, bro, I actually don't know. Like, I just kind of thought that me coming over here and saying, C can you stop? <laughs> would make her stop like that is that has always worked whenever people were, people were causing problems i just came over them and said leave and they kind of did like and pj's like so should we should we call the police and he's like well she broke like some eggs so i bet we could but is that really enough and in the middle of like that sentence they hear a kaboom a massive smash and also a shattering noise so they quickly run over to the situation and they see the karen now has a broomstick in her hand that she picked up from one of like the lifestyle sections and is going ham in the vase section taking swings and kind of pushing vases onto the ground and smashing them at this point she's probably broken like 300 dollars worth of vases 350, 375, 400. She's just going 450. She just keeps smashing stuff. And, and the manager's like, ma'am, ma'am, you got to leave right now or we're calling the police. And that's when the Karen throws her head back and starts to cackle. And she says, the police, don't you know the police can't arrest me? I'm immune to them. And, and the manager was like, bruh. So sure enough, right, Mandra and PJ, they run back as the whole store is being obliterated by this Karen, right? And, you know, they call the police and they say, hey, you know, we got a Karen going crazy. She's breaking everything. Can you come? And so sure enough, the police officers arrive and they meet the manager and PJ and they hear it's in the middle. You're hearing smashing noises. You're hearing destruction noises. And the police are like, oh, boy, what's going on? So they walk over to the scene and the Karen is sitting there laughing as she's breaking stuff. And the police are like, ma'am, ma'am. And the Karen is like, oh, hello there, officers. Hello there. And the police officers are like, ma'am, what? you can't be doing, you can't be breaking stuff. And she says, oh, oh, but I can. And the police officers are like, uh, what? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean by this? And, you know, Karen's like, well, here's the thing. You guys cannot arrest me. It is illegal. And the police officer was like, well, well, what do you mean by that? She's like, well, well, you just can't. 
I can't be arrested. And the police officers are like, you want to you wanna see? You want to see if that's a thing? And PJ and the manager is just looking at each other. And she says, catch me if you can, boys. And she's like, ne- it's like the most ridiculous thing ever. She's next to like a ball pit, like a big container of balls, like for a bunch of like toys or whatever, for like, it's like a kid section. And she flips over the ball container. Remember, this is an older woman who's kind of larger. Like she's not mobile. She flips over the ball thing and waddles into the next sec- in the next aisle, right? And the balls start flying everywhere. So you can't sprint towards it or you might trip on them. So the police officer's like, did, did that old woman just, like, say, catch us if she can? Or if, if we can and run away? The other guy's like, like, uh, I guess we gotta go after her. So sure enough, the two officers kind of, like, power walk. They're not gonna sprint after an old woman. They're like, oh, whatever. They kind of power walk in the direction that the Karen has gone. And at this point, right, you know, PJ and the manager are like, what the freak did I just see? Like, this is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my life, right? Like, I have no idea what's going on right now. So they kind of walk over to the next aisle, and the Karen's not there. In fact, they keep looking, and the Karen isn't anywhere. And the thing is, right, so they go over to someone who's manning the, the cash register, and they said, hey, did you see an old woman leave through these doors? And, you know, the guy manning the cash register says, no one's come in since the police officers, nor left since the police officers came in like 10 minutes ago. He said, that's, that's impossible. Like, where is she? So sure enough, like he says, hey, so this is the only exit, or I mean, there's a fire exit in the back or something, but that would sound an alarm if it went off. And he's like, hey, don't let anyone in or out of this exit. The store is closed for now. It's under like police investigation. So the guy behind the cash register is like, oh my God, is everything okay? And he's like, well, it will be. And so sure enough, you know, the manager and PJ meet up with the police officers and they say, like, fellas, like, we can't find her anywhere. I don't know how she did it, but she escaped. And they say, hey, she's somewhere in this store. We had our guy, like, holding off, like, the, uh, the guy at the cash register is making sure that no one is leaving the, facility, the, the premises and no one's getting in. She's in this store. The only other exit is a fire exit, and the alarm would sound if she went that way. And so sure enough, the police officers, um, the manager and PJ, they continue to kind of, they continue to scout out the store, they do their rounds, and, you know, for the, for the love of them, they just, can't, they just can't figure, they can't find her. And they think it's ridiculous. They said, this is an old, portly woman. How on earth did she, like, find her way? Like, how, how did she get around this? Like, this, this is insane. And that's when they go, and then that's when PJ said, hey, like, aren't there security cameras? And, uh, you know, sure enough, the manager's like, yeah, actually, there are security cameras. And, she said, and he said, aren't there, like, security cameras for all places, like, in the store? said yeah actually so sure enough they go around and they're uh they go to the security cameras and they're looking through it and they're like going through 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 and they just don't see her anywhere and that's when pj said hey did you check the security cameras for the storage and they're like no because they're like why would she go in there they flip it on and there she is, the Karen. You know where she is? She's looking through the bean section. She's trying to find their storage of the alleged, like, hiding of all their treasure, a.k.a. Elmer's beans, which, you know, uh, why? <laughs> so sure enough, they were like, all right, we found her. So the police officers start, like, running towards the storage place. Um, PJ and the manager start running towards that area, too. They get to the door, and they go to try to open it. It's locked. And the manager's like, what? Because he, tur- he turns to PJ, because, like, how is it locked? And that's when PJ remembers, oh, no, he left the keys inside there. She must have used them to lock the door, and now they can't get in. And he's like, PJ, do not tell me that you left the keys inside of there. He's like, how would I know that a crazy Karen was going to come in and accuse us of stealing her precious beans, outrun the police, and store hide out in the storage place? How would I have known that? He's like, well, don't leave the keys in there. It's part of the procedure. And PJ is like, okay, fine, fair enough. But either way, she's in there. She's locked herself in there, and there's no way for us to get in. And the manager's like, well, actually... There is one way for us to get in. And he points to an air duct, like one of those vents. And PJ's like, dude, you're freaking kidding me. This is not a television show. I'm not going in there. Police officers are like, we'll, t- we'll, we'll turn a blind eye. You can go in there, son. He's like, what? Sure enough, right? Okay, this wasn't like a crazy vent or anything. It's not like PJ risked getting chopped up into a billion pieces or... 
I don't know. Maybe he he risked like inhaling some mold or something. But sure enough, it was a pretty big vent, and it went straight into the uh, the storage room. And PJ was not trying to like face off against his granny because he's like, she really wants these damn beans, bro. Like I'm not trying to do that. All he needed to do was open the door. So PJ was like, all right, fine, I'll do it. But you guys got to stand by the door. And the second that I open that thing, you got to come in here and help me out. He's like, all right, fine. So sure enough, PJ opens the vent and is slowly climbing through it. Because he doesn't want to climb through the vent too quickly. Because you can only imagine like, boom, 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 boom. If you're going too quickly, you're going to make a ton of noise in that vent. And she's going to know that you're coming. So they keep going, boom. So he goes, boom. Very quietly and very slowly, and it, he gets closer and he gets to the vent part. So he gets to the grate, looking into the uh, storage room, and it's like a two foot, it's like a three foot drop. It's not like he's jumping from the ceiling. It's not. This is not a massive warehouse or anything. And he gets to the he gets to the like the grate, and he can see the Karen on the other side of the room, and he also sees like he sees the grate there. And that's when he sees that the grate is like screwed in. It's not screwed in really tightly, but if he's gonna get through that gate, he's gonna have to like power kick that. He's gonna have to like take his boot and like kick through the gate open, which is gonna like open the grate, right? It's gonna make it fly out, but it's also gonna alert the Karen to his presence. And she really wants those beans. And if he's being honest, he's kind of scared of the Karen right now. And I'm not gonna lie, I'd be a little scared too. So PJ is like, okay. I got one shot to do this. We could also wait the Karen out, but you know what? Screw it. So K PJ kind of like maneuvers himself, lifts up because he doesn't have a lot of room, but he like lifts up his leg and boom, quickly does a very solid kick to the grate. Thankfully, he makes right the right contact that he breaks the gate open and he immediately slides out and he makes eye contact with the Karen across the room. And the Karen is rummaging through beans and she's like, you. So while PJ is kind of freaked out, he is high on the adrenaline rush and he sprints. And what I mean sprints, he is doing like, he's envisioning himself in the 100 meter dash as he was a good, uh, he was in track in high school. So he was very good. Quick with that, boom, immediately sprints there. The Karen is waddling towards him, right? No idea what her intentions are. Immediately is able to open the, unlocks the, day, uh, unlocks the, the door, pushes it open. The two police officers push back and are like, ma'am, freeze. And I mean, they're not drawing their guns or anything, but she's like, you can't arrest me. And then they go over and arrest her. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Nope, you, actually you can. So sure enough, the police officers get her in cuffs and they're like, all right, well, manager, you're gonna have to go through and figure out how much all the damages are. Send that to us and we'll send it to her and we'll get this figured out. And he said, at the minimum, we can probably, we can't issue a restraining order because only judges can issue restraining orders, but we can submit a case to a judge that I bet we could get a restraining order within like the next five hours and we'll have her in the custody for the next day or so while we have this figured out. And the manager's like, yeah, I'll probably have to send a report up to corporate because this is insane. And, you know, he's like, okay, that totally makes sense. And so sure enough, the police officers, they, uh, they, they escort the Karen out of there. And PJ goes up to his manager and says, hey, man, can I have the rest of the day off? Which is like 1230 by now. So it's like half an hour. He's like, yeah, you know what? I think it's fair enough to close up shop. So PJ gets back home and his mom notices like, oh, it's like 1240. He normally gets back around like 110. So she's like, oh, close up early. PJ's like, yeah, we closed up early. And she said, any reason why? PJ's like, oh boy. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. Today, we have a story of a crazy Karen who thinks that laws are do not apply to her, that she's literally a god, that she can do whatever she wants, and thankfully, right, you know, karma comes and gets the Karen, and you just love to see it. I know you'll enjoy this story, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted this story, Aaron. Real quick, I want to let you know, if you want to submit the stories for this week alone, you can only submit them to my Twitter account. It's on on screen right now and after this week you can submit them to either my twitter or instagram it, i'm just trying to get to a thousand followers as fast as i can so go follow my twitter and anyways let's get right into the story so Aaron works at an amusement park over the summer. It's it's close to Six Flags. Uh, it's not exactly Six Flags, though. It's like a smaller amusement park. 
and it's like family run or something. So it's not a big chain name, but think if you have to think of it, think of Six Flags if you've been to that before. So there's a bunch of rides, there's like food, there's like attractions, there's a bunch of random stuff. And Aaron happens to be working at one of like one of the ride booths, right? So Aaron doesn't even work in tickets. Aaron doesn't even work in like anything really money related. This will be important later on. So Aaron is like managing like one of the rides and it's right next to another ride, which happens to be closed for maintenance, repairs, stuff like that. This happens sometimes that like some of the rides will be down just because they need maintenance and unfortunately there's not much you can do. However, the Karen went there with her son and her like husband or whatever and you know Aaron watched and just happened to see a family walk over and just kind of noticed that you know the uh, you know the ride was closed and they looked disappointed and Aaron felt bad about that because you know you don't want a little kid disappointed you want a little kid happy. However, right, the little kid and the dad went away somewhere else, and that's when the Karen started approaching Aaron. She had, like, the, the Karen haircut, aviator sunglasses, the blouse on, the big, like, obnoxious flip-flops going flop, 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 and she walks over with her hands on her hips, and, you know, Aaron didn't know that this was a Karen, exactly. However, she really, <laughs> the truth is she pretty much did know that this was a Karen, just by the way that the Karen kind of held herself, just by the way that the Karen was approaching her, just kind of like, sometimes you can just tell by like the vibe of someone exactly like who they're going to be. And Aaron knew right away that this indeed was going to be a Karen. So Aaron was like, hey ma'am, like, how can I help you? Like, what's wrong? And the Karen is like, this, our favorite ride, we come to this amusement park every summer and we come for one ride alone. And she points at that ride. And Aaron is like, ma'am, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I'm, I really am. Because, like, Aaron did genuinely feel bad. She saw a little kid get turned away, and she felt bad about that. So she's like, yeah, I, I, I am genuinely sorry about that. That sucks, ma'am. Like, uh, there's a lot of other rides here, right? There's a lot of other rides. Um, you know, I can get you, like, a priority pass. I can give it out to a few people every single day. Similar to Disneyland, how there's, like, employees can give, like, one or two priority passes to people randomly if they think it's a good idea. Um, and so Aaron's like, yeah, if you want a priority pass in a line or something, I can do that for you since I really do feel bad. Normally, like, I would have thought that, the, you know, that Karen would have been thankful for this because Aaron, instead of just saying, sucks to be you, bro, and say, like, go to a different ride or something, you know, that, you know, the, the, the uh, Aaron is, or the employee, Aaron, is, you know, offering to give her a little bit of a pass, but the Karen was not hearing it. She was like, I want you, you, you have, you're an employee, in, an employee here, I want you to man this ride, open it up, and let us go on, and dude, like, the ride was legitimately under construction, like, it wouldn't function even if Aaron wanted to, so Aaron tried to explain to the Karen, hey, ma'am, I'm sorry to break it to you, but, like, even if I wanted to, I physically could not do it, like, it is shut down, the ride is under construction, I don't know how else to explain it, but, I just literally can't right now. Like, I can't help you out. Trust me, I wish I could. I feel bad. Like, I don't know what else to say. And the Karen is like, no, no, no. No, no, no. I don't think you understand. Aaron's like, I, I don't understand what? And she's like, huh. so this is my vacation with my hubby, my husband, and my little boy, my son. We are going to get exactly what we want, and we're going to get it now. And Aaron was starting to, like, be a little less favorable to, you know, the Karen. Starting to realize that Karen's actually not as good, um, not as good of a, not as good of a person as she first thought. You know, she was really holding out, trying to give, like, the Karen a boost on another ride, maybe a coupon or something, just to make the kid feel better. She doesn't really care if, like... You know, a grown woman isn't able to be on the fun roller coaster ride she wanted to, but she felt bad for the kid. But at this point, it was getting annoying. And Aaron's like, ma'am, I, I, don't, I don't know how you don't understand what I'm trying to say, but I'll say it again and maybe more clearly. No one at this amusement park, including myself, can turn on that ride that you want to go to. It is under construction. I am like, I, it is physically impossible for me not to do this. And the, and the Karen goes up to Aaron and says, I know you're just being lazy. I know that if you really wanted to, if you really dug deep down, that you could get that ride going for me and my little boy. But you're just too lazy and selfish. And the Karen storms off. And Aaron at this point is like, wow, like that woman was rude. She wasn't just rude, but she was dense, bro. She was thick in the skull because 
it's very clear that the thing's under construction. I mean, it was like, there's like a crane. It was torn to pieces. It wasn't like flattened, right? It still had the structure of the old ride. But come on now, like that's pretty goofy. You can't lie to me on that. You just simply can't lie to me on that. So Erin was pretty convinced that, you know, that would be the end of like her saga with the Karen and that the Karen would not arrive again. But she was a little worried. The thing is also Erin would change shifts. She would be like, okay, from, I don't know, from 8 a.m. to 12, you're working this ride from, you know, 12.15 to 2, you're working the food stand or whatever. She would have like different shifts that her manager would tell her what to do. So at 11, Aaron was instructed to go work at the, uh, at the burger place. They had kind of like a burger fast food place at this uh, amusement park or you know, call it a roller coaster ride, whatever, right? And so she went behind, so she was the cash register here. Uh, she wasn't making the food, she was behind the cash register. And about an hour into her shift, she sees the same family walking in. So it's the Karen, the husband, and the kid. So the three of them walk up. And, you know, Aaron and the Karen lock eyes. They make eye contact. And the Karen literally just, she squints. She squints, like, maliciously. Like, she is angry, she's upset, and she wants you to know. But, yeah, so sure enough, right, you know, Aaron's like, oh, God. Like, here's the woman again. She's definitely going to do some nonsense, right? Like, 100%, bro. Like, okay. So, Aaron puts on a smile, as you have to do when you work these things. She's like, hello, ma'am. Welcome to, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Burger burger and Stuff wasn't the actual name, but welcome to Burger and Stuff. What can I get you guys? And, you know, uh, the husband actually, you know, stands up and says, hey, uh, how's it going? I'd like uh, three burgers. Can you have one of them without lettuce, pickle, or tomato? That's probably the one for the kid. And also three sides of fries and three shakes, two chocolate, one vanilla. Aaron is like, okay, I got you with that. So she puts in the order and the other two leave. So the father and the son go to get a table as the Karen instructs them to do so. And the Karen walks up and she's like, so. And Aaron is just bracing herself. She's like, oh God, like what is the Karen going to do now? Like the Karen's definitely going to do something stupid. Like definitely she's going to do something annoying. But what exactly, what exactly is the annoying and stupid thing she's going to do? Like, I really don't know. And uh, sure enough, the Karen's like, so, 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 so. You know how earlier you denied giving us that access to the ride we really wanted? Aaron's like, just, just to set the record straight, I didn't deny you access. I, didn't, I denied everyone access because I can't do anything about it, the ride is closed. And the Karen's like, okay, okay, whatever the little details that you want to make up are. What's important is that I'm giving you, I'm giving you an opportunity. I'm giving, since I'm so generous, I'm giving you an opportunity to basically right your wrong. Because currently there is a wrong in the universe, and it's coming from you. And uh, I'm a believer in karma, and it's going to bite you in the butt twice as hard if you don't fix it right now. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to fix the wrong that you put out into the universe. And uh, Aaron's like, uh, okay. And she's like, so, 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 if you want to maybe, I don't know, give us this meal for free, I will forget all about your evil doings. And, you know, Aaron's like, ma'am, I already placed in the order, right? The system knows that you guys ordered that. The system is not going to let me, like, it's going to ask for a card. And if I don't get, like, it knows that, like, the order went out. If I didn't, like, get a payment for it, that's on me. I'm not allowed to do that. Look, I still feel bad that your son isn't able to do what he wants. Like, I don't really care about you, if I'm being honest. And the Karen was like, oh, my God. Oh, my, you don't, and she's like, ma'am, but I do feel bad for your son. Maybe I can get him extra whipped cream, maybe in a cherry that we don't normally put unless you have a special Sunday. I'll put that on his milkshake. Look, but I can't give you the meal for free. And the Karen takes her fist and goes, bump, 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 starts slamming it on the desk. And, and Aaron's like, ma'am, like, please, like, calm down. And she's like, you calm down. I gave you a fantastic opportunity to right the wrong the right, the clear wrong that you have. You won't even, oh my God, I, I, I might faint. 
I might faint. I feel s- Oh my God. Oh my God. And that's when the husband rushes over. And she's like, he's like, honey, honey, is everything okay? And the carrot's like, this evil woman. She's a witch. She, she's evil. <laughs> and the husband is like, shame on you, ma'am. Shame on you. And Aaron's like, dude, what did I do? And he's like, uh, I actually don't know. Because <laughs> like he just rushed over. So Aaron explains, look, I'm sorry you guys weren't able to go on the ride that you wanted. If I could do anything about it, I would. I feel bad for your son. Your, man, your wife demanded I do something and I didn't do anything. She came over here and said that, you know, she wanted the meal for free because she wasn't able to go on the ride she wanted. And I told her that I just can't do anything about that. And that, uh, like, I'll be fired if I do that. And the husband's like, oh, okay. The husband was a bit more reasonable, a little bit. He's like, you know what, honey? Let's just go back to her table. And he kind of looks at Aaron and kind of like, sorry. Because <laughs> he knows, like, okay, my wife's a little crazy sometimes, bro. But life happens, bro. That happens. So sure enough, Aaron is like, okay. This has to be the end of the Karen saga, right? Real quick comment, Karen, if you made it this far into the video, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm gonna try and heart as many comments as possible. And also, please let me know what you're doing while watching these videos, because the best way to support these videos is just by sitting down and watching a bunch of them. But let me know if you're, you know, watching these to help you go to sleep, if you're playing a video game in the background or drawing something or writing something up or anything like that. I am genuinely curious to know what you're doing while watching, it, watching or listening to these videos. Real quick, just so you know, these videos are all on Spotify, um, at least as of like a week ago. Since then, all the videos will be on Spotify for your listening convenience. And also, in most cases, they go up a couple hours earlier on Spotify. So make sure to follow on Spotify. It's the first link in the description. And please rate five stars if you do enjoy what you're listening to. It really does help out the channel. And also, uh, you can submit stories to my Twitter or Instagram. They are both Connor Pugs. They're both in the description. But just for this week alone, since I'm trying to really focus on Twitter for a second, I'm only accepting requests on my Twitter account. After that, it'll be Twitter and Instagram. Anyways, let's just get back into it. Use code ConnorPugs for 10% off anything at GamerSubs. Helps you out, helps me out, and you get a really good product. Let's just jump right back into it. So Aaron is convinced, okay, this is it for like the Karen, like this is it for Karen moments, right? I'm totally fine. Like the, she's going to leave today. And while my experience with the Karen hasn't been great so far... Like, it's, it's not going to be, it can't be much worse. Like, it simply cannot be much worse, right? That's impossible. But anyways, right, uh, she was, Aaron was unfortunately very wrong in this assessment because the Karen was not done Karening. So anyways, right, uh, Aaron is once again put back outside. And I don't know if she's manning a ride, but for some reason, she happens to be outside overseeing something. And, you know, more or less what happens, right, is she's standing outside and she sees the family. And the husband and son go away, maybe go to the bathroom or something. And the Karen is just waiting around. And there's, like, another Karen. That's the thing. There's a second Karen. Guys, this is not good. Two Karens in one room? The, world, the whole universe has a chance of ripping in half. This is really bad. So anyways, the two Karens are looking at each other. And one goes, humph. And the other one's like, did you just humph at me? I can humph at you. And she's like, Hello, ma'am. Like, what do you think that you're doing talking back to me? And the Karen, the original, oh, I'm going to say Karen 1, Karen 2. Karen 1 is OG Karen, the one that Aaron's been dealing with. Karen 2 is the new one. So Karen 1's like, oh, good heavens, are you accusing me of something? And Karen 2's like, yeah, I'm accusing you of something. I'm accusing you of being a big butt jerk. And Karen's like, Karen 1's like, oh, my God. You, you, you're disrespecting my honor. You're disrespecting my family. And she goes, puh, spits on Karen 1. Karen, or spits on Karen 2. Karen 2 is like, oh, 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 my God. Look, look, this woman is hurting me. She spat on me. And Karen 1's like, that's what you get. That's what you get. And that's when Karen 2 is like, puh, spits back again. And that's when Karen 1 it just is she's done with it. And Karen one goes a little bit too crazy. She grabs <laughs> this is kind of nuts, right? And a lot of people are watching this right now. She grabs like a folding chair. <laughs> okay, I don't know how to say this in a straight face. She grabs a folding chair and smacks Karen two over the head with it, and Karen two falls over collapsed. And then at this point, Aaron's like, Oh my god, is this WWE, bro? What? So Karen one is like yeah, that's what you get, because you can already tell that Karen one, you know, is kind of regretting 
the fact that she escalated it to the point that she knocked out Karen 2 with a folding chair. <laughs> like, bro, that's assault, dude. You're going to jail briefly. I hate to say it. Actually, I don't hate to say it. I, I relish in the fact that I can say it. But sure enough, right, people around them start surrounding them. And Karen 1's like, it was self-defense. Aaron pulls out her phone, calls 911, just very quietly in the corner. It's like, hey, I have two women fighting. One of them, like, hit the other with a chair and knocked them out. I need you to come. So sure enough, within, like, five minutes, like, the police officers do arrive. And the Karen is like, this was self-defense. This was self-defense. And, you know, they have, like, medics come over. Karen, too, is okay. She's not, like, dead or anything. It's fine, right? But sure enough, right, Karen one's like, no, no. I, I-, I was doing this in self-defense. I-, I can do anything in self-defense. And uh, so police officers come over, and they're like, all right, ma'am, let's, we got to hear what's happening over here. And Karen one was like, so I was minding my own business, and this other Karen take, took out a massive uh, baton and started beating me with it. Bop, 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 bop. So I got a folding chair, and in uh, my one last effort at self-defense, I threw it at her, hoping and praying that she would stop beating me with the baton, and it happened to hit her just perfectly that she knocked out, and I was saved. I could have lost my life there. And, you know, Aaron is like, I hate this woman. I'm stepping up and setting the record straight, right? She steps up, and Aaron's like, officers, that's not what happened. And the Karen's like, you, she's been out for me since day one. Don't listen to her. And Aaron says like, hey, can I have anyone who is watching this debacle come over and back me up? And like 10 people walk near Aaron. And Aaron turns around and says, hey, if I say anything that didn't happen, call me out. But otherwise, agree with what I'm saying if I'm telling the truth. Aaron goes on to say, so, you know, this woman and this other woman, a.k.a. Karen too, got in a bit of like a, 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 not a fighting match, but they got into a, a, like a, a match of words. And that's when Karen 2 spat on Karen 1. And Karen 1 took a folding chair and beat Karen 2 over the head with it and knocked her out. Like, a total escalation, unnecessary, and assault. And Karen 1 is like, I can do anything. I can do anything I want. As a Karen, and she literally referred to herself as a Karen. She said, I can do literally anything I want. Okay, officers, arrest me. Do it. I dare you. The officers look at each other, and they're like, okay. She's like, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. No, 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 no. You can't arrest me. I, the, the laws don't apply to me. And Aaron's like, what does that mean, ma'am? She's like, the laws don't apply to me, obviously. <laughs> you guys know that, points the officers, and they're like, the laws apply to everyone, ma'am. And she's like, yeah, everyone but me, right? And they're like, ma'am, I'm sorry. No, that's, that's, that's just not how it's going. She's like, <sighs> no, 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 no. I am so, I, I, I'm positive. No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> guys, this joke was hilarious. 10 out of 10 on the joke. You guys are jokesters. This is so funny. And they're like, ma'am, this is not funny. Like, we're, we're, we're dead serious. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to take you in at least. Like we, you at least at a minimum can't be here anymore. And she said, "My family paid good money to be here. We just want to have a good time." And they're like, "Well, you can't beat someone over the head with a folding chair to knock them out. You just can't do that, ma'am." She's like, "But I can do anything I want." What? And the officers are like, all right, this, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. And they're like, all right, we're going to call for some backup. So the officer is like, all right, man, we're going to have to ask you to, you know, come with us just in case when this woman comes back up, she wants to file charges. She definitely has the right to. We're going to need your, like, you know, I don't know, your ID slash license. We just got to file this down. And most importantly, we got to take you out of here just so you don't har- 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 so just so you don't harm any other guests or do anything like that. And she says, what? No, no, you don't understand. No, 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 I can, I can break any laws that I want. What? No. And the, the police officer is like, all right. So they start to like very slowly kind of like push her out of there. She says, oh, no, you guys are harming me. You're hurting me. No, is somebody help, help, help. And she's like pulled out. So like two minutes later, there's still one officer there talking to people, figuring out what's going on, talking to Aaron. And that's when the husband and son come over. And this is kind of a tough moment because the son doesn't want to hear this, but like the, you know, Aaron's like, hey, that's the father. Like, please talk to him. I'll like 
entertain the son or something. So Aaron goes over and entertains the son, and the police officer talks to the husband, and he's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like, I'll, I'll do whatever you need, officers. Like, you know, I love my wife, but she can be very emotional sometimes. She has a lot of a lot of character, a lot of personality, <laughs> which, like, Aaron was like, okay, I don't think I describe a lot of personality as beating someone over the head with a chair, but I guess agree to disagree here, bro. So anyways, right, you know, they eventually all leave, and the day is done for Aaron. And Aaron's still a teenager, so she goes back home because she works this over the summer, and her mom's like, hey, how was your day at work? Aaron normally says, good, and then just goes back to doing what she's doing, but she's like, good, wait, no, wait, mom, I actually... I actually have a story for you today. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today, we have a crazy story of a Karen who thinks that the laws don't apply to her. So she starts breaking laws in front of the police officers. And let me just say that this is one of the most wild Karen stories I have ever received. And I know you'll enjoy it. So sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing. And let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Aiden. So anyways... Aiden was about 17, 18 at the time, and over the summer, he got a summer job working at this grocery store. So he didn't really have consistent hours, so sometimes he'd be working in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, and sometimes really late at night. Like, this was one of those grocery stores that was open practically 24 hours a day. I don't know if it was 24 hours, but he worked a very late shift on, when this story started, he was at a very late shift. So this was like, I don't know, 11, 12 at night. So you'd have a few people come in every like 20 minutes or so, but it really wasn't rush hour. And he was also the only person in the store, which makes this Karen story even more interesting because this Karen decides to come in and start some problems when it's only Aiden. Remember, this kid's like 17 and she's about to give him the hardest time possible. So it all started as what seemed like a normal night. But as all these stories go, they do not turn out to be normal nights. So anyways, Aiden was working at the cash register. He was also in charge of basically anything else going down at the store because he was the only one there. So if someone needed, like, if something needed to be put back or anything like that, he was in charge as he was the only one there. But he was mainly, ma like, mainly manning the cash register at this point. So all of a sudden, at, like, 12.15, no one else in the store, no one else working there, no one else getting stuff. He hears the door open, so he looks over, he sees this old he sees this woman come in this older woman she looks very angry she has a look she just has a look on her face as soon as she walks in she she just has this kind of look that you know that she's going to be trouble like off the bat you know that she's just going to be difficult she's going to be a situation from they know that she's going to be a situation from like the moment she walks in the door that's honestly what it's looking like right now so Aiden kind of looks at her as she very angrily walks up to his desk and He's like, all right, what's, what's good? And she comes up and says, I would like to return this item. And she puts an item on his desk. And I don't know exactly what this item was, but I do have a description of it. It was beaten up. It was broken. It was heavily used. Aiden didn't even know if they sold it here. And she didn't have a receipt. Yeah, I'm going to say that again so I can let that sink in. The Karen was trying to return something that was clearly used so often that it's completely lost its function, whatever it is. It, it doesn't even look like something that Aiden sold at the store, and she also had no proof that she bought it from the store, aka receipt. So Aiden very calmly tells her, hey ma'am, uh, like we do have a return policy saying that it has to like be in pretty good condition, and you also have to have proof of purchase. And this thing is definitely not in good condition. It doesn't look like you have any proof of purchase. And I don't even know if you're in the right store right now because I don't think we sell that here. And the Karen gives him this look. This kind of look of like, how dare you question my authority? I'm your elder. You should do exactly what I say no matter what type kind of look, right? So yeah, um, anyways, the Karen is just like responds to him. I got this from the store, and I have not used it. I only used it once, and it didn't work. I just want my money back. And Aiden's like, 
Uh, could you tell me like a description of this item? Because I'm telling you guys, it was so worn out and so used that Aiden couldn't even figure out what this was supposed to be. Like, he didn't even know what to type into the computer to look up to try and figure out what it was because it was so mangled and messed up and beaten up that he couldn't even tell you what it was supposed to be. Like, like he couldn't even get a good educated guess on it. That's how messed up it was. And that's Loki one of the reasons why Aiden wasn't able to tell me what it was because he genuinely couldn't even figure it out himself. This is when the Karen guy starts to get really mad. She's like, you know, your business is scamming a local citizen by not giving the money, not giving a refund where the refund was clearly stated that you could get one. And Aiden says, yeah, I mean, we do have a refund policy, but it's also pretty clearly stated that you need a receipt to get the refund. And she's like, you know, I, I just don't have it with me. And Aiden's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, but like, if you have it, like, even if you have it at home, we're going to need you to, like, go back and get it. Like, I know that's a bit of a trek, but it's his policy. Like, I don't run the store. I just work here. I can't be doing stuff like that. And so, because Aiden was maybe going to be lenient if she had a receipt, and then he could at least type in the item and see if they actually hot had it. Because, like, Aiden was low-key trying to call her bluff because he was pretty confident that they did not sell whatever this was supposed to be. But she goes on to say... So, yeah, so, yeah, she just like has a mental breakdown. It's like, well, how about you, you just give me my money and I'll get the receipt later, which is like the most ridiculous thing ever. I get that she doesn't want to make the drive, but what if that, like, here's the thing. Let's say that you didn't want to make the drive. Wouldn't it just make sense for you to be like, you don't need the receipt here. This like, give me a refund instead of saying, give me the money now. I'll drive back and get the receipt and bring it back to you. Like, that literally makes no sense, bro. So, yeah, Aiden kind of just kind of puts his foot down a little bit and explains to her, look, without the receipt, I can't even begin the process of trying to give you a refund. Like, not even, not even talking about the state of this item right here as he kind of motions towards, like, the completely destroyed item, whatever it was. Not even to mention the state of this item. Just, like, very generally, I don't think I can even give you, start to give you a refund for this. So the Karen, something changes in her eyes. Something evil starts to brew behind those, the, those cold, dark eyes or whatever. And she's like, so, you've chosen to disrespect me. And he's like, uh... So you have chosen to tarnish your elders. And he's kind of like, bro, what, 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 are you, what are you saying right now? I genuinely don't know what's going on. So you have chosen. And he's like, all right, bro. Because he's like, all right, this, she's going on about something. I don't know what's going on right now, but it's not like I can do anything about it. And she's like... So the, I'm going to enact citizen's justice. Bro, not even citizen's arrest, which is the goofiest thing that you only hear Karen say. Citizen's justice. I'm pretty sure that's just called breaking the law. Oh, man, I'm just going to enact my own justice. When has that ever been said and then something good follows it, bro? Like, actually give me a time and a place and I'll, I'll believe you. But until I hear it, I don't believe you, bro. So anyways, she turns and she starts walking down one of the aisles. And Aiden is so confused at this point because he genuinely just has no idea what's going on. And sure enough, the Karen goes up to one of the aisles and says, are you going to give me a refund? Yes or no? And I mean, obviously, he's not going to give her a refund because why would he give her a refund at this point? She's giving him no reasons to give him a refund. Actually, she's given him so many reasons not to give him like to give her a refund at this point. And he's like, uh, no, I still need to see your receipt to start the process. And, and, and then the Karen takes a big, like, okay, so it was, I think it's like, let's just say it's a big rack of vegetable oil. It was a bunch of something, right? She takes a hand and plows through it all. It all falls on the ground, breaks open, vegetable oil is spilling all over the floor. It's going everywhere. And she turns back to Aiden and just stares him down. And Aiden is pretty shocked at the moment because he had no idea that the Karen was going to start doing actual damage, right? And she's like, do I get a refund now, little guy? And Aiden is just like, whoa, this is out of my range. This is out of my expertise at this point. This was not in the how to be a cashier training. They did not prepare me for crazy Karens in my training, bro. That's all I'm going to say is I was not prepared for something like this. So sure enough, he's like, uh, like, ma'am, I'm going to ask you to leave. Like, and because like, in his training, I think he was told 
to like if anyone's like doing damage or breaking the rules or whatever, you can ask them to leave. And she's like, I'm not leaving before I get my refund. Give me my refund in full and I'll consider leaving. So not even I'll leave, but I'll consider leaving if you give me exactly what I want. She was probably even going to do a little bit more damage after that too, bro, if we're being honest. Yeah, but sure enough, uh, he's like, uh, no, like, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. So what the Karen does is she goes on and just, like, destroys something else. Like, I think she finds, like, something glass or something easy to break. She picks it up, boom, smashes it on the ground, takes another one, lifts it above her head and says, are you gonna give me a refund now? And Aiden's like, no, boom, smashes it on the ground again, picks up another one. Are you gonna give me a refund now? Aiden just looks at her blankly. Boom! Smashes on the ground. So you can see the pattern here. The Karen's just trying to destroy the entire place until she gets what she wants, right? So Aiden picks up the phone, dials 911, as, you know, you should at this point. Someone's breaking all your stuff, and you're 16, 17, whatever, and no one else is there. Can't call for backup, can't call your manager, can't do any of that. So yeah, calls 911 and kind of explains the situation while big smashing and crashing noises are in the background. Okay, the dispatcher says that they'll have people there in 15 minutes, so just make sure the situation doesn't escalate. Which is a, I don't know, it's a pretty big ass to tell some 15-year-old, hey, I know you're in some crazy situation right now, but make sure that it doesn't escalate. Oh, yeah, he'll just go back to his de-escalating a Karen training. You can't train for that, man. You can't de-escalate a Karen once they go full psycho Karen mode, bro. You can't de-escalate them, bro. Anyways, though, yeah, so he's kind of just behind the cash register watching as this karen goes around smashing stuff saying are you gonna give me a refund now little guy boom you're gonna give me a refund now boom but all of a sudden or not all of a sudden i guess 20 minutes later the doors open up and two police officers walk in to see the karen breaking stuff and to see so much stuff on the ground spilled broken all the above right i mean you can't really break uh, oh, splattered destroyed whatever you want to call it depends on the item you can't shatter a, like an apple but you can smush it right so whatever it is it's all been kind of destroyed it's all been kind of wrecked so the police officers come in they're like what's going on here the karen sees them turns around sees a supply closet or like a broom closet okay when i say sprint i mean sprint super liberally I don't mean she's like, I don't know, Usain Bolt doing like a one second mile. I'm saying she like power waddles. Yeah, she power waddles to the, uh, what's it called? To the broom closet, gets in there and locks it behind her, which why did the broom closet lock from the inside? Who knows? Aiden's like, oh, you can't be, you gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me. So police officers, one of them walks over to look over at all the damage and make sure the Karen doesn't escape. The other one goes over to Aaron, Aaron, Aiden, sorry, I think Aaron is the name of the last guy in the last Karen story, actually, and asks them, so can you give me a recap of what happened? So Aiden goes on to say, yeah, so I was just here. She came back with an item. This woman came in with an item, the woman in the closet right now. It was pretty beaten up, and she didn't have a receipt, and she was demanding a refund, and I basically told her that well, one, her item was so like beat up and destroyed. I couldn't even tell her that. I couldn't even tell if it came from here or not. But also, but you know, second, you know, if she doesn't have a receipt, I can't even start the process to giving her a refund. So without the receipt, I couldn't even give her one. So she got really mad at this and started breaking stuff, demanding a refund. And uh, by the time you guys came, she's like broken about a third of the store's items. Like this is pretty crazy. I didn't want to intervene though, because I don't know what this woman's capable of or you know, how deranged she really is. Police officer said, okay, son, you did the right thing calling us and trying to keep the situation as calm as possible. We'll take it from here. So they both go up and actually like Aiden stays in the cash register, but this is a fairly small convenience store. So it's not, so he can hear everything that goes on. So they go up to the broom closet. And they're like, ma'am, what's the meaning of all this? And she's like, that little rat scallion won't get, or rap scallion won't give me a, a refund on my items that I purchased from the store. He is stealing from the elders right now. And they're like, ma'am, first of all, he just works here. He can't make the rules. Second of all, it's pretty clearly stated and there was a legit sign talking about refunds in the store. So it's not like the Karen had no idea at all. It was actually fairly clear, but anyways, 
They're like, ma'am, it's pretty clear from, like, what we're seeing, like, and they point to the sign, you do need, like, a receipt to get a refund. Like, that's just kind of the deal here. And she's like, well, he should have known. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. The Karen was just going on about something about how she deserved a refund and how it's so bad that she didn't get one or something. But, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. And eventually, they were like, ma'am, if you don't, like, if you don't come here, or, if, or it's like, if you don't come out right now, we're going to go in there and get you for, like, and I don't know. They say something along the lines of that. And that's when the Karen starts maniacally slash evilly laughing. It is one of the weirdest, most off-putting, like, responses that Aiden could have ever heard. Like, it is the weirdest thing ever. The Karen just starts laughing, laughing hysterically like an evil villain in a superhero movie when she's in the closet. And what she's about to say next is one of the craziest things Aiden has ever heard anyone ever say. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I like to see all the people who commented. I'll try and heart as many of those comments as I possibly can. Thank you guys. Anyways, also, these videos are on Spotify, or I try and put as many of them as I possibly can. Link's in the description. Also, follow tic my new TikTok, or it's the same TikTok, I guess. I'll be posting my shorts on there as well if you want to help out. And finally, the best way to support the channel is just to binge watch the videos. So at some point, sit down and just watch a bunch of my old story videos. Or maybe right after you're done watching this one to the end, you can just keep on watching more videos. I'll have a story time playlist in the pinned comment. That makes it really easy for you guys to watch. And please, 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 if you are binge watching the videos, make sure to comment down below telling me such so I can say thank you personally. Anyways, let's get back to the crazy Karen story. So anyways, a little recap. The Karen has ran into the broom supply closet, right? Because she sees the police and she, she knows she's about to be arrested. Aiden explains the whole situation to the police and explains it like, all right, this is what's going on. This is what's going down. And they're like, okay, uh, they probably got their walkie talkie. We're like, we got a, we got a code 58 crazy Karen in a convenience store. I repeat, we got a code 58. I don't know if that's a real code or something, but let's just say for the sake of it, code 58 equals crazy Karen in convenience store. Typical situation they have to deal with on the daily at this point. But anyways, they go up to the Karen and they basically tell her, look, we're going, if you don't come out here and like, we're going to we're going to go into the supply closet. We're going to open that door if you don't open it yourself. And that's when the Karen starts laughing maniacally, which is one of the most off-putting responses you could have possibly heard. One of the most off-putting responses in general, right? So sure enough, the Karen is just laughing, laughing maniacally. And she says, you guys can't arrest me. You can't arrest me. And the, the, the police officers are just looking at her. And she says, you wouldn't dare arrest a woman. That is not very gentlemanly of you. So the Karen opens up the door and starts laughing. And the two police officers are just looking at each other. And they look back at the Karen. And then the, they look at each other. And then they look back at the Karen. And the Karen responds. Re the Karen repeats herself and says, You guys wouldn't dare arrest a woman, so I'm going to walk free. Unless you want to be bad gentlemen. Bro was really raised in the 1700s or something, bro. I don't know what, I don't know what, what crossed her mind to think that that's actually what's going to happen. But that is what's going to happen, bro. Like, I was like, all right, word. So she walks out there, and the police officers are like, uh, ma'am, you caused all this damage to the store. We are going to have to at least take you in for questioning. She's like, what? No, you wouldn't dare not be good gentlemen. <laughs> and they just kind of look at each other. And Aiden is just so floored by this response. He's just so, he, he, he's trying to figure out what's going on. Aiden's like, is this really her response? Is this her really her get out of jail free card moment is saying that they wouldn't dare arrest her because she's a woman and they would not disrespect their manlyhood or I don't freaking know, bro. But yeah, um, they basically say, I don't know if that's how that's going to work. So they turn her around, they take out the handcuffs and she says, you wouldn't dare do that. And they both look at each other and then they put on the handcuffs and she's like, no, no, arrest him. And they both look at each other, the two police officers looking at each other like, bro, what did this, what did she just say? And she's like, arrest that guy behind the cash register. Pointing to Aiden or like motioning to Aiden because she's got her hands behind her back. It's 
a little hard to point to someone when you're in handcuffs with your hands behind your back. And they're just like, uh, why? And she's like, he's robbing me of my, of my refund. They're like, uh, what? She, he's robbing me of my refund. And they're like, ma'am, ma'am, you, you, first of all, you know what, ma'am? No, because <laughs> they were not going to explain it to her for the hundredth time of how, like, no, if you want a refund, you got to get your own receipt. And no, if he's not doing it, he just works for it. And they're done explaining it to the Karen. And as the Karen is being walked out, she looks at Aiden and looks at him dead in the eyes and says to him, this isn't over. Mark my words. And that was, like, one of the most chilling responses Aiden could have ever received. And, uh... Let me just say, she did not lie. This was not over, and she was definitely not done. Unfortunately for Aiden, she was very much not done because she was about to return in the worst way possible. Fast forward three months. Aiden is still working here. It's like, it's kind of towards the tail end of the summer. So Aiden's like, this is like his last week or last two weeks or something. But he's basically, he's almost done with what he's doing, right? And it's, he's completely forgotten about the Karen incident. His manager came in the next day after the whole Karen incident, kind of gave him a, uh, a thank you for handling the situation well. The shop actually closed down for a couple days to reassess or whatever. They, uh, the Karen was like fined X number of dollars to repay for whatever, and she actually did which is a little surprising, especially for what she's about to do. It's a little surprising she went through with it. Um, she definitely had a change of heart, that's all I'm trying to say. But yeah, after about a week, they got the place up and running again, and uh, Aiden was made like employee of the month or whatever out of the three employees they had. So wow, such an honor, man. But anyways, uh, fast forward like two months later, three months later, whatever I said, this is like one of the last, this is either the last week or second to last week that Aiden's working the shift. And, uh, you know, he just has completely forgotten about the whole Karen situation. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't think much of it. He's kind of at the point where he's like, okay, you know, I'm kind of wrapping things up. The Karen situation's in the back of his head at this point. And uh, that's when he just happens to look out the window. And he just happens to look at a car that's pulling in. And he just happens to notice someone walking out of the car that looked oddly familiar and it just happened to notice that the person who looked so oddly familiar was carrying a freaking baseball bat bro and that's when he realized that the reason why this person looked so so familiar was that this was the karen yeah the karen that got arrested and tried to destroy the entire store three months ago has returned in broad daylight with the freaking baseball bat dude so yeah, immediately Aiden calls 911. Because at this point, you know, the Karen has been told never to return. And if she does, there's going to be trouble. And she's also returning with a baseball bat. So at this point, it just makes a lot of sense for Aiden to get ahead of the situation. So while he's on the phone, you know, he explains like this woman has caused damage before. She's appeared in the parking lot with a baseball bat very suspiciously. I just would feel better if someone came because I can almost guarantee something's about to go down. They, and they... This is kind of a local police department. So I think the person even literally remembers what happened before. So, uh, yeah, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we got you. We got you this. Don't worry about it. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, uh, the police are coming. But the police, it, it's going to take like 15, 20 minutes. So Aiden's a little nervous right now. But there's another cash, uh, cashier there. Someone wa- He's not the only one at the store at the moment. So he yells at them, says, hey, we got trouble. Person comes up. He's like, oh, my God, who's that? And Aiden looks at him and says, you know that Karen I was telling you about that one night? And the guy that Aiden's working with looks at him in a look of disbelief, like no way that's the same person. And Aiden has to break the bad news that yes, that is the same person, and that person is coming at them with a baseball bat. Yeah, not looking good for both of them right now. So anyways, right, you know, they're both like, okay, what is she going to do? And the Karen makes eye contact with Aiden. Aiden makes eye contact with the Karen. And the Karen starts bursting out into laughter as she approaches the place with a baseball bat. Yeah, not looking really good right now. So she starts walking towards them. 
with a baseball bat and uh, goes up, like, opens up the door window and says, "You or not the door window, opens up the, the door. And Aiden is staring at her. And the other person Aiden is working with has frozen as well and is just staring at her as well. And they're just looking at her. And she's just looking at them. And she has this big grin on her face. And let me just say that they do not have the same grin on their faces. To say the least, they do not have the same look of excitement and joy that the Karen is with them. They are not equally as happy that this is the case. Yeah, so they're all just making eye contact with the crazy deranged Karen who's standing in the door with a baseball bat right now. And she's just looking at them. And she says, you didn't think I'd be back. I told you. You should have given me that refund all that time ago. And now I had to, I'm taking my revenge. And immediately she turns to one of the windows. Boom! Hits it with the baseball bat. The window shatters. At this point, Aiden's real scared. Understandably. Because look, when the Karen was destroying stuff in the store, he was really afraid that it was going to get out of control. But at that point, she was really just breaking stuff with her fists and throwing it on the ground. Like, he really thought, okay, if the Karen comes swinging for me or something like that, it really wouldn't be that big of an issue because, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not too scared. But now the Karen's coming in with an actual baseball bat. Like, that's kind of just a different story right there, bro. That's low-key just a different story. Like, if she swung at him and made contact, dude, that could do a lot of damage. I don't care if she's barely able to swing it. Like, I don't care if she doesn't have the strongest swing. I don't care if she's not, like, in the MLB. I don't care if she doesn't bench press 325, bro. It doesn't matter. She just she still has a baseball bat. That's a weapon right there. So Aiden kind of, like, backs up. He makes sure to keep his distance with the Karen. And him and his, like, co-worker are trying to keep their distance, right? And they're just waiting on the police to come. So the Karen is yelling at them, Should have given me my discount! Should have given me my discount! While slamming the bat into windows. Cl basically clean the cash register right off. Because she took a clean shot of the cash register with her baseball bat. Boom! Thing explodes. $10 bills fly everywhere. And then she starts going into the aisles, boom, boom, starts whacking stuff. And that's when the police officers get there. So the police officers get there. They see they're alerted about the Karen. And I think one of them was actually there last time. So they know about the Karen. And they see her destroying, swinging around a full-fledged freaking baseball bat. So they're definitely on edge at this point. And they're just like, freeze! And the Karen turns around looking all deranged and crazy, with an actual baseball bat, right? She has a baseball bat out, which is, that's pretty bad. So they're looking at her, and she looks at them, and she says, make me, which was probably one of the worst responses that you could have given to two police officers when you're holding a baseball bat, because one of them does make her. Pulls out the taser, which, I mean, look, you got someone swinging around a baseball bat, I'm not going in to sit down to have a polite conversation either. I get where he's coming from. Taser, zaps her, immediately goes to the ground. I mean, this Karen's not, uh, this Karen isn't like some kind of like Iron Man, like, and he was hit with two bullets and he stood there unfazed, like cue whatever music. No, no, no. You know, I mean, if you're hit with a taser, you're going down, bro. So yeah, Karen collapses, baseball bat, goes on the ground one of the police officers rushes over to like separate her from the baseball bat puts her at handcuffs checks her to make sure she doesn't have like any other weapons or something like that she does not the other police officer goes over to once making sure that the uh that the karen is like contained or whatever goes over to aiden and his co-workers ask hey do you are you good did she hit you with a bat are there any damages to you or whatever you guys good they basically say yeah we're safe like we always kept our distance or whatever and uh yeah one of the police officers who was there last time is like is this really the same woman that was here like three months ago and uh, you know at this point aiden recognized this guy from being there three months ago he's like yeah this is the same woman I haven't seen. And, you know, he says, have you seen her over the last, like, two or three months or however long ago it was? And he says, no, like, I have legitimately not seen her since. She also, the money went through that, like, she was charged for all the damages she did. She paid it through, so we kind of thought that we'd never see her again. But I guess not. So, yeah, the police, like, take her away. Um, obviously, this was a lot more serious. 
Uh, I don't know exactly what the charges were, as I wasn't told exactly. Um, the because like, remember this convenience store wasn't some big chain; it was like a mom and pop type location. So they were actually able through insurance or whatever. Somehow they got the money back. They had to close down again for a second because now there's broken glass and windows and destroyed stuff. And uh, yeah, the Karen was now very, very much. She was in bigger trouble. I don't know exactly what. I would assume that she served some jail time for that. I doubt she got off and like the second time because like that time she was swinging on them with a bat like that's some serious stuff you're doing right there but yeah moral of the story is uh i don't know don't be a karen bro yeah subscribe if you're new watch another click video on the video on the screen channel, right now please. i know you'll enjoy it just click it do it how's it going everyone i hope you're having a great day because today i have three karen stories that i know that you will enjoy so sit back relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, Watch, listen to this on Spotify if you haven't already or if that's your preference, first link in the description, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this first Karen story, Alex. So anyways, right, Alex was, you know, tasked to babysit his cousin, and they were at a fair. So basically, Alex and his family, you know, they were staying with, you know, the other part of Alex's family with his cousin, and, you know, they all, you know, they were hanging out for like a week together, just some quality family time. And, you know, Alex was asked to babysit his cousin because Alex was significantly older. His cousin was like six or something. And, and he was asked to babysit him when they were going to the fair because, you know, maybe the parents wanted to go somewhere else. Maybe, you know, they just wanted to give Alex and his little cousin flexibility to do what they wanted to do. Alex was around 15 at the time, so he wasn't an adult, but he, he was definitely old enough to, like, have that sort of responsibility. So anyways, Alex and his little cousin, they were walking around. They were checking out rides they wanted to go on. And all of a sudden, they were standing in line for one of these rides. And behind them came a Karen. And this Karen was like the quintessential Karen. And she was also, she was going on these rides by herself, which is totally fine. But the following actions are not as if, you know, she's trying to do it for her like son or her kid or whatever. It's because she wants to go on the ride. So anyways, right, Alex and his little cousin, they're standing in line for this ride that they both really want to go on. And the Karen behind them goes like, excuse me, gentlemen. And they both turn around. She's like, um, I really want to go, like, I really want to go on this ride. Like, I need to go soon. Can I cut in front of you guys? And the thing was, like, you know, this line was, uh, this was a pretty big line. So, you know, there was, like, a lot of people. And, uh, you know, Alex, you know, Alex and his little brother, you know, Al oh, not his little brother, his little cousin. Alex was kind of thinking to himself, like, no, like, I don't want that. Like, look, we've been laid in, waiting in line for a while. I just don't think I can do that. And so, you know, Alex says, hey, like, I'm sorry, like, we don't have a ton of time either, but I feel like this line's going pretty quickly. And the Karen is like, but I'm your elder and a lady. That should be, like, double the respect, so you must allow me to pass you in line. And, like, at this point, you know, Alex was kind of just, like, looking at her like, ma'am, I'm sorry, no. Because, like, first of all, bro, like, maybe, maybe if, like, you had, like, a little kid and you are like, explaining to me look, my son really wants to go on this line. We have to go, like, our ride is coming in 10 minutes. Can you please let us cut? Okay, fine. But, if bro, if you're just, like, a Karen who wants to go on the ride, look, I want to go on the ride, too, and my little cousin wants to go on the ride, and I, I just don't think I'm going to let you cut on this one. I'm sorry. I have no obligation to do that. I get it that you're older than me. I get it that you're a lady, bro, but that doesn't matter. That simply doesn't matter. And the thing is, right, you know, the Karen supposedly took it very well. And she was like, oh, okay, that's fine enough. The, the thing is, though, right, this was kind of like, this was not actually the reaction in her head. Apparently, the Karen was so shocked that anyone would say no to her that, like, all this rage and anger started to build up. It started to just, like, build up and fester, and she started getting angrier and angrier. And Alex and his little cousin turned, like, back around, right? They're not going to continue on the conversation with the Karen. It's a little awkward right now. But, you know, they're just not going to continue on the conversation. You know what I mean? And uh, so sure enough, right, the Karen says, excuse me, boys, once again. And she kind of had a tone in her voice. Like, you know, that kind of tone when someone says like that, you know, when someone has like the tone that's like kind of like a babying voice where they try and baby you. But it's also super, super condescending where they're like, hello, can, you know, can you turn around for a second? I just want to talk to you just once. Like, I don't know, like a little kind of like voice like that. So Alex already knew. 
he already knew from this, like, right off the bat that they were going to be in for some nonsense, bro. Some, some grade A, class A nonsense. So sure enough, Alex turns around. He's like, okay, what's up? Like, what, what, what's going on here? And, you know, the, the Karen is like, what's your two relationship? Like, what's the deal with you two? And Alex is like, oh, this is my, like, little cousin. I guess the Karen wanted to know if they were, like, siblings or friends or random people. I don't know. And the Karen is like, you know, Alex, I really don't think that you're doing, or she didn't say Alex because she didn't know his name. She's like, you know, I don't think that, you know, you're doing a good job showing, res like, teaching your little cousin respect. You did not do a good job at all teaching your little cousin respect. That's all I got to say. It's not very respectful of you. It, it, you know, he's looking up to you. He needs a good teacher, and you're honestly not a good teacher for him. I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're not teaching him respect. I asked if I could cut in front of you, and I am your elder, and you said no very rudely. And so Alex is like, quickly, he's like, hey, well, come on now. Like, I, I didn't say it rudely, and like, I'm sorry. I, we just want to be on this ride too, and the line isn't that crazy. Like, come on now, like, it's all good. Yeah, maybe Alex could have let her go in front of her. It's not, like, the biggest deal either way, but the Karen was making it, like, the biggest deal ever, and she's like, you know what? You know what? Fine, you know what? I, he's gonna, you know what? <laughs> the Karen is just, like, stumbling over her words at this point, and Alex kind of just turns back around, and she says, you know, your little cousin's gonna learn manners one way or another. I won't let him not learn it, and Alex felt that that was, like, a really wor weird way to word it. Like, that was a really weird way to say, like, I'm going to make sure that your little cousin learns manners? Like, what do you mean? Like, we'll never see each other again. Alex, at that point, thought that he would never see this woman again. However, he was unfortunately very mistaken. He was quite mistaken. So anyways, eventually, Alex and the little cousin get to the, get to the ride, front of the line. They're led on, and it's a fun ride, and they had a good time. So they get off, and the little cousin's like, or Alex is like, hey, can you just wait here? I'm going to go to the bathroom. Alex goes in the bathroom, washes his hands, you know, does all this stuff. He comes out. His little cousin is gone. So immediately, he just gets a pit in his stomach. He's like, oh, my God. And like, he starts yelling out. He's like, he's like, he's like, uh, Ben, Ben, where are you? We're going to say the little cousin's name is Ben. Ben, like, this isn't funny, man. You can't, like, you can't hide from me. I'm in, like, ah, I can't let this happen, right? Come on, come out now. And, you know, he started to get really nervous because... You know, understandably, he's nervous. I mean, he was he was tasked with taking care of this kid, and all of a sudden, this kid disappears. So he starts looking around, and he yells out, like, Ben, Ben. And so he just starts walking out, and he's like, oh, my God. And Alex gets a buzz on his phone. He checks it. It's his mom being like, hey, can you meet us at the whatever in 10 minutes? And he's like, oh, no, not just the fact that I lost him, but now I got to be there in 10 minutes. And there's no way that I can tell my mom, oh, yeah, by the way, I lost our cousin. Yeah, no, I just lost him. So at this point, you know, Alex is walking around the fair trying to just figure out where his little cousin is. And that's when he gets a glimpse of someone that he thinks is his little cousin. So he immediately runs over and it's just like a crowd of people, a huge flood of people are walking in his direction. That basically just means he's slowed down, he's struggling to get there, he's being pushed back and all this kind of stuff, And but he definitely very clearly sees that it's his little cousin, so he's like, oh my god, and he sees his little cousin, and his little cousin is like being led by someone, and he's so confused, like, who's leading him, and he looks up, it's the Karen. The Karen has the little, has like the little cousin's hand and is holding it, and it's kind of dragging him around. Remember, the little cousin's like three or four. So for all we know, the Karen said, hey, I know your mom, like, come with me. Which, first of all, bro, like, that's like the first thing my mom told me. She's like, look, white van or stranger, don't get in. They need help, like, finding their puppy. Like, don't get in, bro. Like, I'm sorry, they got candy. Don't get in, bro. I, I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Don't do it. So sure enough, right, you know, Alex at this point is freaking out, which understandably, I would be freaking out too. And he, but at least now he knows where his little cousin is. 
So he starts, like, walking in the direction of the Karen. And, you know, the Karen is, like, turns around and sees Alex and starts moving away faster. The Karen is basically trying to kidnap this kid, right? So Alex turns to the security guard and says, hey, like, my little cousin, his name is Ben. He looks like this. He pulls out a photo. He's with this woman who was, like, talking to me earlier. She basically has, like, you know, abducted him or whatever. So the security guard takes this very seriously and says, okay, thank you. And he goes and just walkie-talkie and says, hey, if you see a kid who is about, like, uh, four, four feet tall, brown hair, wearing a Buzz Lightyear shirt with a woman about five, five, six hundred pounds. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> with this like a uh, glasses, shorter haircut and a pink shirt. Please stop them at security. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the description. And that that's when like Alex starts going out. He starts sprinting. He starts running really fast and he just can't find them. And he's freaking out. Right. He also gave the security guard his number so he could contact him. And his mom is like, sends a text and Alex looks at his phone. It's, it, the text says waiting dot, dot, dot. It, at this point, Alex realizes it has been 10 minutes. And remember, his mom said, I need you to be here in 10 minutes. So at this point, right, Alex needs to be there in 10 minutes or it needs to be at this point place. He doesn't have his little brother or not his little brother, his little cousin. And his little cousin has been abducted by the Karen. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below as the secret word of the day. The hard as many comments I possibly can that say Karen. And also, if you want to continue supporting the channel, the best way you can do it and help the channel grow and reach new people is literally just by watching more videos. So after this one, sit down and watch more of them. And please let me know in the comment section, what are you doing while watching these videos? Like, uh, are you drawing or trying to go to sleep or playing a video game or cleaning your room? I don't, I don't really know. I'd love to hear it. I ask every time because I am genuinely interested. Also, as I said briefly in the beginning of the video, all of these videos are on Spotify. And even if you're not a huge Spotify user, I do put these videos up at least normally about an hour before they go up on the main on here on Spotify. So if you want to get a taste of what the story is early, go to Spotify. If you are using Spotify, follow, turn on notifications, and please rate five stars. And if you want to submit these stories, these are all subscriber submitted stories. Go to either my Twitter or Instagram. They're both at Connor Pugs. They're both in the, in the description of this video. Follow me and then send me a DM. If I don't get to it right away, sometimes I use stories from like I get submitted four months ago. I literally have used stories four months ago, right? So if I don't respond to it right away, don't take that the wrong way. And also sometimes I use your story and I don't even respond because I write it down. I just go straight to it. So always be checking in with the videos. With that being said, use code CONNORPUGS for 10% off gamer subs, join our Discord server, and let's get back to the story. So sure enough, right, Alex is kind of racing around, and at this point, he's really freaked out. Like, he's like, oh my god, like, uh, oh, what am I, I going to do? Like, this is so bad, this is so bad. And that's when he gets a phone number, or a call from a phone number that he doesn't recognize. He picks it up, and it's kind of like, hello, and it's the security guard officer. And the security officer says, hey, can you come to section B of the place? Like, the security office is section B. And he's pretty close to section B, so he immediately rushes over and goes there. So Alex very quickly rushes over to the security office in section B. He gets there and the security officer has the Karen and his little brother kind of not held captive, but asked them to wait. And he's like, are these like the two that you described? And he's like, yes. And the little brother like runs over to Alex, gives him a big hug. And he's like, dude, like little bro, like you can't, or not little brother, cousin, sorry. He's like, little bro, you can't be going at, you can't just be like going off with random people who ask. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't know any better. So the security officer kind of turns to the Karen. It's like, ma'am, like, can you explain this? And she's like, yes, yes, I can. This little boy over here, and he points to Alex, was very rude to me, so rude. And he is a bad influence on his little cousin. So what I was going to do was I asked the little cousin to come with me and I was going to teach him manners, respect, how to be a gentleman. But you guys decided to stop me in my tracks before I could do that. And the police and the scary officer is like, well, you know, did like, did, did you get like permission from the parents or the guardians, right? And he kind of points to Alex. And Alex is like, no, I had no idea. I was searching for my little cousin for a while. And, you know, the security guard's like, okay, well, like, how, what did you tell the little cousin to get him to come with you? And, you know, the, uh, the Karen was like, uh, I told him I was going to teach him how to be a gentleman. And the little cousin's like, no, you said that you know my mom. And she's like, well, uh, uh, and the security guard's like, so, ma'am, you're telling me that you took this little boy, like, that you took this little boy, dragged him with you, and basically said that you knew his parents when you didn't. And the Karen's like, well... 
you know, things might have happened. And the security guard's like, I'm sorry, ma'am. I cannot allow you to ever come back to this place. Like, if this guy, if Alex chooses to, or the family chooses the final report, we're going to have, like, with the police, we're going to have to go with it. And she's like, what? No, this is my favorite amusement park. You can't take that away from me. You can't take that. That's cruel. You can't take that away from me. I, I won't allow it. I won't allow it. You don't understand. I want, and the security guard, like, is like, all right, ma'am, come with me. And she's like, no, no, no. And she's being dragged out. So Alex goes, calls his mom. His mom's like, Alex, where were you? We're so worried. And Alex is like, man, like, mom, uh, trust me. I have a good reason for it. Tell us where to meet you, and I'll explain everything when we get there. So, you know, Alex's little brother, or sorry, Alex's little cousin, I keep getting that messed up, walk over to, you know, the place that they're meeting his mom, and the mom, and then, you know, the little cousin's mom is like, oh, where have you guys been? You, like, what is going on? And Alex is like, well, I have a good explanation. Here's what happened. So the subscriber we're going to call uh, for the next Karen story is George. So anyways, right, you know, Karen, uh, George was working at the movies. So this was like George was a teenager. He was working on the weekends at the movies to make a little extra money. So he, Karen, uh, Karen, George was working behind like the stalls. Like, I don't know if you've been to a movie theater, but if you have, you, you know that you can buy popcorn, you can buy candy, you can buy drinks and stuff like that. And that's actually where movie theaters really make their money. So George was like the person behind there basically making the popcorn and ringing up the register when people would buy it. And earlier that day, a Karen and her family came in and got a lot of stuff, including some popcorn. And, you know, she said, hey, can I have some extra butter on it? And George was like, all right, fine. That sounds cool. And he puts on the butter. He does a good job, hands over the popcorn. Two hours later, two whole hours later, the Karen returns and she is not looking very happy. And the Karen walks up with an empty container, two empty containers of popcorn, right? And she walks on up and she's like, you like, or are you the young man who like made my popcorn? And George already knows by, first of all, the tone of the Karen, the way she's walking up to him, him, all of this stuff. George already knows that, oh boy, like this is, this is, this is not going to be good. So he's like, yes, I was. He's not going to lie to her, but he's not happily admitting it. And she's like, I want a refund. It was not buttery enough. And, uh, you know, normally when someone has a complaint about something like that, like that's fine. But what George normally does is he just remakes the popcorn. He never really like, I, I don't know. He doesn't like give a refund. And also the situation here is a little bit different because the Karen came up with two completely empty boxes of popcorn. And, you know, you know, well, George kind of points it out. He's like, well, ma'am, it looks like Maybe you didn't enjoy it the most, but you and your family enjoyed it enough to finish both boxes. And the Karen's like, that's irrelevant. We choked this popcorn down. It didn't have enough butter. And George is like, ma'am, I'm sorry. Like, I can't really give refunds on that. Normally, like, if you came to me and, like, you had ate some of it and it wasn't to your liking, I would have no problem making you another thing of popcorn. However, like, I, I just can't, I, I can't issue you a refund because, like, you ate all, like, you ate all the pot, you ate all the popcorn, and then you're coming to me with an empty container asking me to give you your money back because it wasn't good enough. That's just not really how it works here. Like, I'm sorry. And the Karen is like, what do you mean you can't give me a refund? I, I, I think, I think you're, I think you're discriminating me against because I'm your elder. This Karen is like 40 or something. And George is like, ma'am, what? Like, uh, this makes no sense. She's like, you know what? If you don't give me a refund, you're getting a discrimination lawsuit because you hate me because I'm old. That's why you're not giving me a refund. And it, George is just like, ma'am, like, that's absurd. That's obviously not the case. And she's like, you're absurd, George. And he's like, oh my God. And he looks down. Yes, he has a name tag that says George. So that caught him off guard a little bit. But, you know, he was like, um, I, I, I don't know what else. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I just can't give this to you. It was partially, the reason why George didn't give, like, the, the refund was partially because his own, like, morals slash ideas of how the world works. You can't go in to a movie theater who doesn't, movie theaters don't make a ton of money, especially nowadays. This happened a little while ago, but especially nowadays. And they, they only make money and a little bit of money 
on, you know, the food that they sell. So asking that, you know, George, like, refund the food after the person ate it all just doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes, if he actually mess it up and put, like, I don't know, pepper, paprika spice or, like, hot sauce in the popcorn instead of salt and butter, sure, full refund, whatever. But he just didn't add enough butter, and he did remember putting a lot of butter in it. So he was like, okay, ma'am. No, but also the other half is his manager has a very strict, like, you can't give refunds unless, like, something terribly goes wrong. And there's, like, a very few, like, situations where that's okay. So he's like, um, I, I don't know what else to say, but I, I can't give this to you. And the Karen's like, you know what? You know what, George? I want to hear from your manager. And the thing is, right, George's manager was kind of, was kind of strict, was kind of an older guy. Like, he definitely did not like being bothered by George. George, you know, kind of, you know, respected him enough to not bother him that much also. So George was kind of unhappy that he had to pull out his phone and call up his manager. His manager picks up. He's like, what? George is like, a customer wants to speak with you. And the manager's like, can you not deal with it yourself? And George is like, I'm trying to, but she demands that she speaks with you. And the Karen is sitting there all with a big smug look on her face. The Karen probably thinks that, you know, after this, that she will 100%, most definitely, right? That she will most definitely get a refund and the manager will come out on his knees like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. You're so right. I'm so wrong. I'm a big idiot and you're the smartest person ever, ma'am. I'm sorry. So the Karen's waiting there all smugly and that's when the manager comes out. And the Karen starts, like, yelling at the manager. She says, your employee won't give me a refund on this popcorn. He didn't put enough butter. And the manager takes one look at the Karen and looks at the fact that she is holding two empty popcorn containers. She is eating, she has two empty popcorn containers. The manager says, ma'am, did you eat all that? And she's like, yes. And we choked it down. I demand a refund. Manager's just like, no. And she's like taking it back. She's like, you and your employer are saying no to me because you're discriminating against me because I am an elder. And the manager's like, how old are you? And she's like, that's a rude question. I'm 48. And the manager's like, I'm 52. I'm not discriminating you because of your age. I'm saying no because you obviously are just trying to swindle us out of our money. Ma'am, movie theaters don't really make any money. And the only money that we make, the, one, the little bit that we scrape by is from the food. Don't try and rob us because you're too lazy, like, because, like, you, you just don't try, basically, just don't try and rob us, ma'am. I know for a fact that you ate all that popcorn and thought it was fine. If you didn't like it, you wouldn't have finished it. And then you came back here demanding a refund. That's ridiculous. Please go along your way. She's like, I'm going to tell everyone on Facebook that this is the worst movie theater ever. I'm never taking my family back here. I'm never going to do it again. And the manager's like, okay. Bet. Nice. Bye. She's like, <sighs> I'm going to tell everyone on Facebook. I have so much power on Facebook. You don't even understand the amount of power I have on Facebook. I will crush you. I will crush your little tiny movie theater. Ah, uh, you don't understand my power. And uh, George was just standing there like, oh, well, uh, I mean, I got a story to tell my mom if she asks me when I come back home. Uh, so the, we're going to call the subscriber of the next story, Will. So anyways, right, Will worked at an, uh, at an after-school gymnastics uh, program where kids would be dropped off after school. They would learn all the whatever, right? And the end of the semester, I don't know what you'd even really call it. It was like an after-school program. At the end of the program, let's say, um, there was kind of like a little bit of a competition. The parents would, would be invited. They would be allowed to come. And they would give out prizes. They'd give out, like, the gymnastics program award. We're just going to say that, like, the best, like, the most improved award, the whatever award. Kind of like a, it's kind of like a whatever little fun award ceremony. Not everyone got an award, but it really was not that deep. That's what you got to understand. This was, like, a little fun after-school program. And they gave out little dinky awards. And at the end of the day, it simply, simply was not that deep, okay? It just was not that deep. Uh, but anyways, right, so, uh, you know, who was the... Will. Sorry, forgot who the name we were using. So anyways, right, Will worked at the place after school. It was a good, like, little after school job. He himself was a gymnast, and he was going to college to be a gymnast. So doing this for his senior year was kind of fun, and he got a little money on the side as well. 
So he was teaching all the kids, and there was this one kid who call, who we're going to call Ben. And Ben was, like, a cool di- Like, he was fine. He was a cool kid. He did what he needed to do. But he just didn't win any of the awards. Because, like, even before the, the show, they kind of just decided who was going to win the awards. At the end of the day, the show was just kind of, like, to show off to the parents and to allow the parents to see a little bit of what their kids learned. And then, and then right after is, like, the award ceremony or whatever. And uh, sure enough, right, you know, one thing about the awards you got to know is it's normally they, they try and give out awards to kids when it's their first time showing up. So if kids have been coming to the camp for like seven years, they're probably not going to give them the award. The reason for this is the reason why they give out these awards is kind of like an incentive, like if a kid for kids to come back. Because, like, a kid, it's their first year there, they have a fun time, and then they get an award. Mom, Mom, I want to come back to gymnastics camp. But if a kid's been coming for a while, they're like, ah, we'll give it to someone new anyways. So sure enough, right, you know, Will hands out this award. Or, no, sorry, I skipped ahead. Uh, so sure enough, right, it, the parents come in. Will greets them at the door. It's like, hello, everyone. Welcome to the gymnastics show. He hands out these little fake flyers or whatever. And all the parents, like, line up in the, in the gym slash or auditorium in a row of seats. And sure enough, one by one or in pairs, kids come out and they do whatever they're doing. Some kids are just doing like handstands or, you know, I don't know, ac- like very low skill acrobatics. Han- I can't, I, I don't even know if I can do a handstand. Don't take that as offense, right? However, some others come out and they do something more advanced and it's a whole range of things. Because, you know, anyone's allowed to come to this camp. So kids who have no experience, kids who are really good, whole range. And they wanted to show off this whole range, right? So, you know, sure enough, right, you know, they, all the parents are clapping. Everyone's very happy. And then Will is up there with his other camp counselors doing the rest of the award ceremony. So they get up there and they're like, all right, so to the, the, the most improved goes to so-and-so. And everyone claps. The funniest guy or the funniest camper award goes to so-and-so. Everyone claps, right? The most improved goes to so-and-so, everyone claps. The overall model camper award goes to so-and-so, clap, clap, clap. And the, uh, the gymnastics cup goes to so-and-so, everyone's clapping, right? And the one thing you got to know is that Ben's name was not called. Ben didn't really care that much. He got it last year, so he thought that was cool. And he's like, okay, whatever, someone else can get it. But you know who was very happy about Ben getting it last year? Ben's Karen mom. He really liked it. He really liked the fact that, you know, he got an award last year. So you immediately see someone stand up in the auditorium, and it is Ben's mom, a.k.a. the Karen, and scream out, Is that all the awards? And uh, Will was like, "Uh, yep, that's... First of all, this is very weird. Like, parents don't normally scream out and, like, talk. But Will, who's thinking on his feet, is like, uh... Yep, that's that's all the awards for this year, folks. I just want to say thank you, everyone, for coming. I, you know, you can also pick up a little uh, your kids' uh, journals because every single day they do a little journaling or whatever. They're in the back of the auditorium. Uh, you can also come talk to us if you have, if you want any one-on-one coaching. You know, our coaches that are available are over, and you hear the Karen say, "Are you sure there's no more awards?" Will is, first of all, Will has just been interrupted twice. He's like, yes, ma'am, this is it for our programming. Once again, thank you guys so much for coming. And then you hear, the awards have been rigged. The whole award show is rigged. And Will is just like, what? And everyone kind of turns around to look at this woman. And she starts stopping her, boom, 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 boom. She starts stopping her way up to the front. And everyone's like, oh, my God. She gets up on stage. She goes up, and Will is so, like, shocked. He is so just, like, taken aback by everything that's happening that he basically willingly lets the Karen snatch the microphone out of his hand. She takes the microphone, and she's like, Yeah, I want to let you know that the award ceremony is rigged. Last year, my son won the Model Camper Award, and this year I know for a fact that he was not just a model camper, he was the best model camper at this camp because he was twice as good as he was last year. And I want to let you know that whatever fraud went down will not be tolerated. I And, he, and she like turns out and she says, I don't know who won the model camper this year. It was some kid, we'll call him like Steve. But I know for a fact that his parents bribed you. And she turns around and points at Will. And Will grabs the microphone back and is like, ma'am, 
Like, this is ridiculous. The awards are a little token that we give out at the end of the year. This is not some big crazy thing. And the Karen snatches the microphone back. It's like, no, you don't understand. This is a really big deal. And you're just not appreciating how much I care about this. You don't understand anything. <laughs> you don't understand. And she starts like running off stage. It's like, oh, Ben, come with me. We're never coming back to this stupid camp ever again. Grabs him by like the, the scruff of his neck. Remember, Ben doesn't care. He doesn't care if he wins the award or not. That's not what, that's not, that, that is not what is important to him. And he's like, okay, mom, like, whatever you want. And, uh, yeah, so at this point, uh, oh, what I call him, Will, Will is kind of like, okay, everyone, well, that was kind of weird, and everyone kind of laughs a little bit, but just so you know, uh, oh, thank you so much for having your kids with us. I'm sure they had a great time. And the thing is, next year came around. And Ben showed up again, and Will, like next year, because Will is now a counselor, first year in college, but he came back for the summer, so we did the summer program, and he's like, Ben, like, I didn't think I'd see you here again. And he's like, yeah, well, uh, you know, my mom, it took me a while, but I used this as kind of like my birthday present to be allowed back here. And my mom, you know, not really wanting to get me a real birthday present was fine with that. And Will's like, yeah, okay, well, uh, I don't know if we can allow her back at the award show. And Ben's like, you know what? I was thinking about that. So I told her the award show was being held on Saturday. They, they, they hold it on the Friday, right? And uh, she's just going to show up to an empty auditorium. So everything will be okay. And uh, Will Click on the like, video oh, on screen right guy. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Today we got a story submitted by a subscriber of a crazy Karen who steals her pet cat. I know you guys will enjoy today's story, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Ava. So anyways, right, Ava had a cat. And Ava's had this cat for a very long time. It was one of those pets that she got when she was much younger. So she doesn't totally... So but she didn't get the cat when she was, like, born. But the cat's been her life basically since she can remember. Ava's around 12 at this point, And she got the cat when she was, like, 4 or 5 or something like that. So this cat is pretty close to Ava. There's also been rumors of this lady who lives in her neighborhood. And these rumors have been spread by other kids. You know, parents have talked a little bit between each other. But for the longest time, Ava only thought of these, and Ava's parents only told her that these were simply rumors. What were these rumors, you might be asking? Well, the rumors were of this lady, who was just called as the crazy cat lady. And we will call the Karen, the crazy cat Karen, right? So anyways, the crazy cat Karen was rumored to have so many cats... And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's the way that she was rumored to have gotten these cats, which is the bad thing. She has been rumored, or Ava was told by her friends, and you know, her friends are saying, oh my god, the werewolves are coming out at 2 in the morning tonight, Ava, be careful. So there's a lot of disinformation coming from these, you know, these other children, right? As it, as that happens, it happens. Um, but uh, this time, they actually were correct. The story goes that the reason why the crazy cat Karen had so many cats was not because she went to, like, I don't know, Petco or adopted so many cats that needed it. It's because she would go around in the neighborhoods surrounding her, so, like, near Ava's neighborhood and all the other neighborhoods and, you know, suburbs or whatever that were near um, where the crazy cat Karen lived, and she'd go along and she would, like, stock out family's pets, specifically cats, and once she found a family's pets or a family's cats that she really liked, she would wait for the perfect opportunity, steal the cat, and never be seen from again. And this is kind of like one of those, Ava kind of thought it was like one of those like, I don't know, like one of those horror stories like, ooh, if you look in the mirror and say Bloody Mary three times, she's gonna come out and get you. It's like, okay, okay. Settle down, Jeremy. It's not actually real. And Ava thought that this, uh, you know, the crazy cat Karen stories were kind of under the same guard of like, oh, it's like, come on now. It's, you can't be serious when you say that. So one, another thing, this, actually, no, not another thing. So this all, like, this story happened when Ava was like 11, 12, something like that. And it was like, I don't know. It was in the summertime, she was off from school, and uh, one thing that, you know, Ava did every single day 
Would she let the cat go outside? You know, it, 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 there's a litter box in the house, but, you know, she tr she let the cat have some outdoor time. Maybe want to go to the bathroom. Maybe just wanted to, I don't know, exist outside. There, a lot of cats really only stay inside, and Ava didn't, like, walk her cat around the block like a dog with a leash or something. But Ava, you know, let the cat go outside. And the cat was good enough that the cat was never going to just, like, run away. The cat, more or less, always stayed very close to the house, always stayed very close to Ava. And every single day, you know, Ava would walk outside with a cat. And so what, one day, one day on the summer when Ava was around 12, she was outside with her cat. And uh, it was just a very normal day, a very normal time of just like, you know, she went out with her cat, everything was very normal, nothing was out of the ordinary, as of now, of course. Because Ava was kind of standing there, she was looking around, and she was kind of just, uh, she noticed something. She noticed that there was this woman who was walking on the other side of the street, the other side of the street from her house. Uh, but the thing was, this woman, who was older and had these, like, glasses on or whatever, was staring at Ava's house, and very specifically her front lawn. And who was in the front lawn? Ava and her cat. So it was very difficult to see where this old lady was staring because she had very big and thick uh, sunglasses on. But it was very clear the direction that this old lady was staring in. So anyways, Ava notices this, but she doesn't really pay super close attention to it or it, it doesn't stay long in her memory until following events happen, as you will soon see. And she, you know, refers back to this later on. But she does say that she finds it quite, she found it kind of st quite strange how the old lady would slow down, almost to like a near stop, but like a very slow shuffle that really didn't get her anywhere. And she was just staring almost intensely. It was difficult to see if it actually was intensely or not, because, I mean, it, it's hard to tell with sunglasses on. But she almost, she almost came to a standstill as she was walking outside and looking at Ava's front lawn. And Ava's felt a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, she didn't feel too out of the... It didn't feel too out of the ordinary at first. Because, I don't know, like, old people doing slightly strange things? That's not, that's not like, wow, revelation, new discovery has been made. Old people sometimes will do things that are a little bit strange. Come on now. But anyways... Things got more peculiar. Pe I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I just woke up. So uh, things got stranger, okay? Stranger things. Uh, by the way, this, this uh, story is on Spotify. First link in the description if you like listening on Spotify. But things got really strange on the second day of the story. So on the second day, it was a very regular day once again. And once again, Ava with that, was out with her cat. And once again she saw the old lady walk by. And last time, she kind of slowed down almost to a stop as she was looking over at Ava and her cat. But this time, she completely stopped. And she wasn't even walking in the direction anymore of, like, going straight. She turned 90 degrees to be facing towards Ava and her cat. And Ava saw this, like, in the corner of her eye. And she was very uncomfortable. So she was just, like, playing with her cat in the front yard, trying her best not to make eye contact with this lady who was just staring her down. It was so weird and uncomfortable. and just such a strange experience that Ava was just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm just not going to make eye contact and she's going to go away. And after what was probably like 30 seconds to a minute, but felt like hours to her, eventually the, who we, the, the lady, we don't know who she is yet, right? Eventually walks away. And... Ava says something to her mother about this at dinner time. So they're sitting down, you know, Ava's mother, you know, made, I don't know, she made, but she made something. And Ava says, hey, like, something weird happened today. And Ava's mother was like, yeah, what's, what happened? And she's like, there was this, like, lady yesterday that, you know, walked by the house and seemed to be staring at, you know, me and my cat and probably says the cat's name, but I'm not going to give the cat a name as I will get way too confused way too quickly. And you guys will be very upset at me in the comments as always. Um, and she's like, oh yeah, she's staring at me and my cat. And I didn't think much of it because, you know, stuff like that might happen. But today the same lady came by and she seemed to be staring longer and more intensely. And I don't know, mom, it's just kind of weird. 
And at that point, they had completely, they didn't even, they didn't put two and two together with the rumors of the, you know, the crazy cat Karen who steals people's cats and, you know, this random woman coming by and looking at, you know, looking at the cats. And, I mean, it, it's like, I, I, it's understandable because it's like, remember, uh, Ava and her parents had put the rumor of the crazy cat Karen in the same category as the boogeyman and the Loch Ness monster, right? You see a splash in your local pond, you're not gonna be like, oh, yep, it's uh, underwater vampires. I knew it. I knew it. They're real. You're, you're not gonna make that connection, right? But things get extremely, extremely intense on the third day. And this is where everything happens. If you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below. I'm just curious to see how many of you guys made it this far. So anyways, on the third day, right, uh, Ava's outside with her cat. As always, she does this every single day. She likes having daily outdoor time with the cat because, like, you know, some cats live 100% inside, but, you know, sometimes they want to get outside. So Ava's out there, and for some reason, right, there is... Ava is separated from her cat for a second. I think Ava turned around to do something and the cat kind of wandered towards the edge of the lawn, which was totally fine and in most situations would have been completely fine um, because the cat would have never ran away um, or has never and the cat is allowed to walk to any point of the lawn that it wants to. So the fact that, you know, the cat walked further towards the curb is not an issue. However, there had been a car idling there. It was very strange. It was like, it was, wasn't parked, it was still on, and Ava noticed it, but she couldn't see who was in the car, so she just thought, oh, okay, maybe it's my neighbors, because they had, like, teenage neighbors or whatever, or parents with teenagers as neighbors, so, oh, maybe it's just one of their friends, and they're getting something inside, so they want to leave the car on, but they're going to hop out, right? Doesn't even... It doesn't even, like, you know, think of it like that. But as soon as Ava is on, like, the other side of the lawn and the cat has wandered towards the, the sidewalk side of the lawn, if that makes a sense, someone walks out of the car very quickly, or as quickly as an older lady can go, snatches up Ava's cat, and that's when the cat, like, yell, like kind of, like, lets out a bit of, like, a meow yelp. And at this point... You know, Ava turns around and she sees the lady from the last two days. And she, you know who she sees in her hands? Her cat. The, this random lady has stolen Ava's cat. And this lady turns around, doesn't jump into the car. Remember, she's like 65 or something. She's not jumping into anything. And she's not an athletic 65 by no measures. She fumbles back into the car, right? And uh, the dr she closes the door and, like, drives off. It, within, like, 30 seconds or less, Ava, at the very beginning of that 30-second interval, she was, like, with her cat, and she turns away for a second. By the end of the 30-second interval, this the cat is gone. Her cat is gone. Some random woman has stolen her cat, and they drove away. However... The car is extremely distinct. It is a red car with, like, blue stripes. Like, I don't know if you're going to go around kidnapping cats that if you want the most distinct car on planet Earth. I mean, I have personally never seen a red car with blue stripes in my life, but maybe the crazy cat Karen had a specific style that she liked, and it was red cars with blue stripes on them. Um, so... Ava immediately runs back into the house and is like, well, kind of in tears, of course, 12 year old and your cat was just brutally abducted by an old lady. Runs in the house, is basically screaming to her mom what happened. Her mom like runs out with her. It's like, what happened? What happened? Eventually Ava gets it out, says everything that happened. You know, her mom's just like, what? And, uh, you know, they, you know, Ava's mom walks over to the neighbor's house, rings the doorbell and basically tweet it. Uh, I almost said tweets out. Sorry. A lot of Twitter notifications. Rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth II. 
just got a thousand notifications that she died so yikes um i didn't mean yikes i'm sorry i'm doing this in one take it, delete anything that came out weird uh, <laughs> um <laughs> i'm not gonna edit that i don't have the time to edit a anyways not to derail literally everything in this video but they go over to the neighbor's house and the neighbor's like yeah there was a car idling outside and it seemed to drive away quickly basically confirming what ava was saying so ava's mom is like freaked out I mean, she's not just freaked out, but she feels terrible for her, uh, you know, um, <laughs> sorry, Schlatt tweeted out something pretty funny, not the time. Um, she feels terrible because, like, her cat is gone, but this was really Ava's cat? You know, this was really, um, this wasn't really her cat, this was, like, Ava's first response, this was, like, Ava's pet, right? It was a family pet, but it really was Ava's pet. So for the next week, remember, an entire week goes by. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the entire week goes by and there's not a sign of Ava's cat. At this point, you know, Ava's basically grieving for the entire week and Ava's parents are kind of trying to figure out a way to tell her that the cat's not probably not going to be coming back. It's like when you lose, I've never lost a pet, thank God. But when I see those, you know, those posters for lost pet after about 48 hours, the probability of you getting your pet back, just the half-life is terrible. It just, shoot, it falls down so quickly, right? And at this point, Ava and her mom, Ava's mom is trying to get Ava's, you know, attention off of her cat. It's a very sad situation. No one likes to see anything like that. And Ava's mom is very desperately trying to, like, find a way to make, you know, her daughter feel better about everything that's been going down. So Ava's mom is just like, okay, you know, hey, you know, Ava, like, do you want to go to the park today? Ava, very, still very distraught, you know, still very upset and almost in a state of mourning. But also at this point, Ava, you know, she's 12. She's a lot of confidence, a lot of optimism, a lot of hope in the world. Ava's not convinced that her cat is gone forever, but she's still very sad, very rattled. You know, she says, yeah, mom, sure. I'd love to go to the park. So they get in the car and they drive, and they drive for like 20 minutes, right? And they happen to be in a neighboring town. They happen to be, you know, they happen to be driving in a neighboring town, which is close to them, but also happens to be where the park is. And this is very important that Ava remembered the very distinct car. Because Ava, you know how you're in a long car ride, and I did this especially when I was a kid, and especially when I didn't have a phone. I would just sit there and kind of, like, stare out, you know, the window and look at all the cars. Sometimes I would play, like, you know, if there's a bunch of, uh, you know, telephone wires, I would play the fake guy running on the telephone wires in my imagination or whatever. Honest to God, I still do that sometimes, but y you know what I mean. She was just, like, had her eyes. She was just looking out. And she sees, you know, they're, they're kind of going through, like, this neighborhood. She sees a red car with blue stripes. In the exact, the exact pattern that she saw before, she yells up to her mom, pull over. And her mom, not going to question it, she's also not on the highway or in a situation where she couldn't pull over, pulls over like a block past that house. She's like, mom, I saw the car. And Ava's mom's like, Ava, like you, I think you're just imagining things. And Ava's like, mom, no, you don't understand. It is a, it is a red car with blue stripes. Like, genuinely, like, I swear, like, it is the car I need to go now. Ava's mom was having a lot of pushback. One, she thought that Ava was just a seeing things, or B, it was a coincidence. And also, two, she doesn't want Ava, like, running up to some random house, right? And Ava's like, Mom, Mom, please, I need at least let me go and see the car. At least let me go to verify it myself. So Ava actually had a bit more of a plan, but she didn't want to let her mom know because her mom definitely would not have been a fan of the plan. But Ava was telling her mom, look, just let me, just let me go and look at the car to see if it's actually it. Ava's actual plan was to check a little, do a little bit more investigation than she was leading on. So sure enough, right, um, you know, Ava's mom, after a lot of talking back and forth, is like, fine. You can go and do that, but, you know, I don't, like, this is dangerous. Like, please don't, like, get yourself in any trouble. Which uh, Ava yeah, got herself in a little bit of trouble, but we're getting to that. In a, we'll get to that in a second. So anyways, 
Ava, you know, at this point is just like, you know, she gets out of the car. Her mom's at the very end of the, uh, at the end of the block. And Ava walks down. And sure enough, in the driveway is the car. It's the car of the crazy cat Karen 100%. It is the exact same pattern. And there's just not a lot. This isn't like, I don't know. A, a a Ford F-150, like, I don't know, gray color. It's not like a, a bajillion of those cars on the highway or something. Or it's not like, I don't know. But it is a very specific red with blue stripe car. So she looks at it. And then Ava looks in the window. And you know who she sees in the window? Her cat! Her cat and her make eye contact. And the cat is looking at her like, there's no way this is like my owner or whatever or friend or whatever you want to say. Like, that's impossible. The, the cat is like looking at her and Ava's looking at the cat. Ava's like, I don't know for 100% sure, but I, but no, I have like, I have a gut feeling that is 100% my cat. So Ava runs up to the house to the dismay of her mom who is parked all the way down. So her mom can't like get out and yell at her or anything. She runs up all the way to the front of the house and she grabs the door and she tries to open it and it just opens. The door isn't locked. There's no nothing like that. Ava is not going to knock and be like, hello, crazy, insane Karen who stole my cat. May I have my cat back, please? I will give you $5 as a token of my gratitude, my lord. And say, yeah, she's not going to do that. So Ava runs into the house, runs into the room that she thinks she sees her cat in, and she makes eye contact with her cat. Her cat immediately jumps into her arms. It's like 100% guarantee that this is her cat at this point. She's staring at her cat, who she started to believe that she was never going to see again, right? She started to believe that she was never going to see this cat again. And she's just looking at this cat. The cat has jumped into her arms. However, Ava also, as she's, Ava, like, grabs the cat, walks out and is about to walk out of the house when she looks up a flight of stairs. And at the very top of the flight of stairs is the crazy cat Karen. And the crazy cat Karen says, get back here. And the crazy cat Karen starts waddling down the stairs. Ava bolts it, bolts out of the house, sprints out of that house, bro. She's out of there so fast, runs down the street, meets up and her mom's like kind of like yelling inside the car or whatever and you know as ava like opens up the door she looks behind her the karen has left her house and is on the street kind of like waddle sprinting i don't know how else to describe it besides very slowly walking intently towards her so she gets in the car jumps in yells her mom go 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 her mom who's just like acting on inf on like reflexes is just like not even questioning it hits the gas they go and ava's mom's like ava i told you not to go into that house like that's so dangerous I, that woman is very clearly like mentally ill like what if she did something insane to you and ava just is like not even paying attention because you know what ava got her cat back and uh that's all that matters here man Ava got her Click on the video back. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Leave a like and I'll actually give you nothing, dude. No joke. Nah, but what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And imagine you're just sitting there on a nice sunny day having such a nice time when this Karen appears out of nowhere, demands to speak to the manager, and says that she's going to place citizens you under citizen's arrest and then sly tackles you like she plays for the freaking Giants? Yeah, so this happened to a subscriber, and I'll be telling that story, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into the story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story, Andrew. So anyways, right, Andrew's at the park with his little brother. Every single Saturday, he goes to the park with his little brother. It's just like a nice activity they have, because Andrew is significantly older. His little brother is like... I don't know, dude, he's like eight or something, and Andrew is like a senior in high school. So yeah, and also this is going to be the last year that Andrew's at home because he's going away for college pretty soon. So he's honestly just trying to spend as much time with his little brother as possible. So anyways, this is a normal Saturday, and he was just kind of chilling in the park. And there's a lot of fun things to do in the park, like there's, I don't know, there's slides, 
There's the outside world. There's grass that can be touched. Uh, wink, wink, nod, nod to a lot of you guys. I'm just kidding. Love you guys. Don't unsubscribe. But yeah, uh, this day was a little bit different, though, because uh, there was a Karen in the park. So the first time that Andrea actually saw this Karen, she was just, uh, she was standing at the other side. And she had like the she had the big aviator sunglasses on. She had the quintessential Karen cut. You already know what I'm talking about. It's like when the like the hair is cut really short on one side and flopped all the way over on the other, like the Karen I showed on the screen earlier in the video. Yeah, she had the quintessential Karen cut. She had the big glasses. She had like this like really weird shirt that didn't fit that well. And she was like full of anger and dissault and tilt, and she was just not having it. She was like on the other side, her hands were on her hips, and she was scanning the park. Like she was looking around. Basically, dude, she was scanning the park for trouble because she was bored, you know? She wanted to just mess with some people and mess with some people she was about to. So Andrew looks over, and the Karen is staring right at him. And he's like, no, 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 no. Like, come on, man. Like, come on now. And the Karen starts walking over very angrily. Like, her fists are bald, and she's like, bum, 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 bum. Just kind of, like, starting to walk over, right? And Andrew's just looking at her like, dude, you can't be serious, bro. Like, you cannot be serious right now. And she comes over, and she looks at them. And right now, it's just Andrew and his little brother. Just, like, his, his little brother is just, like, blissfully, unawarely, just, like, I don't know doing his thing and Andrew just like looks up and she says excuse me and Andrew's like yay like yeah what's up and she's like this is a private park and I demand you guys go and the thing is right Andrew knows for a fact that this is just massive cap right now because dude he's been going to this park since he was a little kid since he was like his little brother's age and uh yeah this was very clearly a public park and he just responds calmly like, ma'am, I think you have this confused with somewhere else. This is pretty clearly a public park. I've been going here for a while. Like, you can even look it up. It's listed as a public park. And she's like, this is a private park. And if you don't get off out of here in three seconds, I'm calling up the manager. And uh, Andrew looks at her and he's just like, dude, what are you talking about? What do you mean the manager, bro? We're at a public park. The manager of the parks department? Are we calling up Leslie Nope? Like, what's going on right now? And she's like, three, two. Dude, for some reason, some people just think if they start counting down that you're going to do what they say. Give me a million dollars. Three, two. Subscribe to this channel with notifications on. Three, two. But anyways, right, so the countdown goes down and Karen's like, that's it. You guys are so doomed. And she, like, walks over, and there was, like, a like a park police dude or a park ranger or whatever who happened to be, cro like, kind of, like, passing by, and the Karen must have seen him. So he walks up to the park ranger and says, like, arrest these two hooligans immediately and points at, you know, Andrew, who's just, like, sitting there, and his little brother who's playing in a sandbox right now. And the park ranger's like, ma'am, like, what is the reason that you want me to, like, go over there? And she says, they are in the park and I don't want that. As a taxpayer, this is my private park. So basically, the Karen had construed that since she pays taxes, that, you know, the taxes pay for this park. And therefore, this park is hers. Therefore, it is her private park, which is just the most ridiculous logic I've ever heard in a million years. But hey, man, I mean, we are talking about a Karen right now. So if you thought that she was going to have normal people logic, then like, I don't know, bro, you must live in a different planet, too. But anyways, right, the park ranger says yes, but they probably pay taxes, too. And either way, this like this park is open to everyone. Like your pa like all of your tax dollars pay like you know, to have this park available for everyone. This isn't your private park. And that's when the, like, the Karen goes out, like, is, looks at the, like, the ranger and says, I demand to speak to your manager to sort this nonsense out. And the park ranger looks at her and says, I'm actually, like, the chief ranger here, or whatever, like, the highest ranking ranger here is. I am my manager. If you'd like to speak to me, I'm all ears. And the Karen just kind of looks at him and gives him this look. It is like, fine. So the Karen, like, at this point, like, Andrew's like, all right, word, like, the Karen's not going to mess with us anymore. Like, we're chilling. Hopefully she doesn't come back here and do this, like, every week or something. But, uh, unfortunately, uh, Andrew was completely wrong because the Karen, as she's storming away from the, uh, as she's storming away from the, the park ranger, starts storming towards Andrew and his little brother. And he's like, oh, my God, what's, a, what's going on now, bro? Like, what are we doing now, bro? And she comes over and she's like, you know what? You're disrespecting your elders by not leaving right now. 
So at this point, right, the Karen at first says, get out of here, this is my private park, I demand you to do so, three, two, one, get out of here. Now she's saying, because you don't leave when I demanded you to, over a lie, right, that you're disrespecting your elders. And at this point, you know, Andrew's like, ma'am, like, I'm sorry, we're not leaving the park, this is like the time I spend with my little brother, he likes it here, like, just because, like, I'm not doing what you're saying doesn't mean I'm disrespecting you, there's a big difference. And the Karen's like, you think this is the last of it? Well, you're wrong. And the Karen basically disappears into the void, in a sense. I mean, not actually, but she kind of disappears back into the woods, the park, whatever. She, she leaves, but she doesn't exactly leave. Uh, Andrew thought that she was go good and gone, but that is not the case. So anyways, later that day, Andrew, or Andrew's little brother, has a birthday party to go to. So about after half an hour later, like, chilling in the park, Andrew finds his little brother. He's like, hey, man, like, we got to go to your friend's birthday party. And obviously, Andrew's little brother is really excited for all this. So, you know, they get up and they walk to the car. So Andrew gets in the car and he starts, like, he puts his keys in. He starts the car and he looks behind him, right? Because you have to look when you're backing out. You don't want to back into someone. That would be big bad. And he sees someone sitting in a car. And it's like this weird minivan type thing. Nothing wrong with minivans. They're actually nice cars, right? But it's like this minivan with a bunch of like weird stickers on it. And there's a woman sitting in the car. And she was looking at them. And Andrew was like, that looks like the woman from the park. But it can't be because she's been gone for like an hour at this point. Like, no way that's the same Karen from the park earlier. Right? Yeah. So, anyways... <laughs> You know, he, he, he pulls out and he starts driving because he's driving over to his friend, uh, his little brother's friend's house, which is like, I don't know, 20 minutes away or something. So not too bad. And uh, yeah, that's when like he looks in his rear view mirror after driving for like five minutes in the same car that was in the parking lot with the person who looked just like the Karen is right behind him. So at this point, Andrew's like, well, maybe this is just a coincidence. Um, this is a little weird, but no way that Karen's actually following me. Like, that would actually be psychopathic. There's not a shot she's actually doing that. So Andrew just keeps driving, right? And uh, driving and driving and driving, and they're about to pull into the, uh, they're about to pull into the neighborhood of the kid of the little brother's friend, right? And guess what? The Karen, or what looks like the Karen, is still driving behind him. So in Andrew's mind, he's like, well, I mean, maybe she's a grandmother of a kid who's also going to this party, um, who also happens not to be the Karen that we met in the park, maybe. So yeah, at this point, Andrew's like, he pulls into the driveway of the kid who's having the birthday party, and he watches as the Karen mobile, that's what we're going to call it right now, the Karen mobile slows down. And Andrew's like, if she pulls in, like, I'm actually going to have a problem, right? And if it is the Karen, we're going to have a problem. But the Karen mobile slows down as it passes the house and then speeds back up and goes by. And Andrew's like, well, that must have just been a really strange coincidence because I could have sworn that that was the Karen, right? And uh, Andrew goes in with his little brother to drop him off in, his, or not drop him off, but to be there as well, to bring him into the birthday party, thinking that that was just a really strange coincidence and that that definitely wasn't the Karen. Let me just say that Andrew was mistaken. The Karen was stalking him all the way to the birthday party. And you might be thinking, well, the Karen must be done. No, she's about to enact her revenge. The Karen is about to strike. Empire strikes back, but replace Empire with Karen. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below. I just like to see how many people made it this far into the video. And if you want to support the channel, literally the best thing you can do that helps me out even more than you can ever imagine is just at some point today, maybe after this video or later while you're doing something like drawing or watching a television show or playing a video game or trying to go to sleep, if you can binge watch my old videos, you can watch them just watch normally, get one of my playlists. If you watch a bunch of my old videos, it helps me out so much. Let me know in the comments section if you are doing that or are planning on doing it or have done it so I can reply and say thank you and heart it. Just so you know, it helps me out more than you can ever imagine. Anyways, let's get back to the Karen's Revenge because it's about to get pretty crazy right now. So anyways, there, uh, Andrew brings his uh, little brother in and his little brother's at the, uh, the birthday party and it's like Star Wars theme. So, dude, I freaking love Star Wars, but they have like sword fights and they have like stormtrooper helmets and... You know, this kid really liked Captain Rex, so he got a whole Captain Rex Halloween outfit with the helmet and everything. Like, it was super sick. Yeah, but uh, anyways, um, Andrew hears a car pull up. 
And he doesn't think much of it. He's like, oh, it's like 30 minutes after the party has started. Like maybe some kid is just coming late. Like that happens all the time. And this party happened in the backyard and there was a fence. So basically you pulled up and you walked in through the backyard fence, walked into the backyard where the party was happening. In the backyard fence, right? You know, op- the backyard fence opens and guess who walks in? It is the Karen. And Andrew is basically in the middle of a massive stare off with the Karen because he's thinking to himself, there is no way, bro. Ain't no way, bro. Like there is not a shot that that is actually the Karen. My eyes must be deceiving me because I know for a fact that that is not the freaking Karen, bro. Not a chance that is the Karen. But yeah, the Karen walks in and like the some of the other parents there kind of look over. They're like, is that one of these kids grandmothers or something? Like, what is going on? Like, we don't know who that is. And uh, the mom of the birthday boy, who's the friend of Andrew's little brother, walks up and says, hey there, like, are you related to anyone at the party? And the Karen is like, I am not, says it very proudly. And I don't know why you'd say that so proudly, like you're, you're being mad bold right now. And she says, this party is violating the rules of the city. You must have a permit to throw something like this, which totally isn't true. Maybe there's some weird, very specific law I don't know about, but bro, are you really calling the cops on a kid's Star Wars birthday party that's happening at three in the afternoon? Like, you cannot be serious, dude. Yeah, but uh, anyways, the birthday boy's mother is like, uh... Nope, I think this is totally okay, ma'am. Like, thank you for voicing your concerns. If you want us to keep it down a little bit, I'll relay the message. But, uh, yeah. She basically says, no, take this L, default dance, right? And, uh, the Karen is like, no, no, no. Don't you think for a second that you hooligans are gonna get away with this? Like, this is illegal. And, like, then he point or she points to Andrew and is like, and this one is very disrespectful, too. I'm going to call the police on you for breaking the law and being disrespectful to elders and points at Andrew. And Andrew's like, ma'am, I don't think that's a crime. It's not, I, also, I wasn't being disrespectful. Even if I was, though, definitely not a crime, ma'am. Don't know how else to say it, but uh, it's, not, it's not illegal to be disrespectful. And she's like, well, see about that. So the Karen takes out her phone and walks outside. So Andrew goes up to the birthday boy's mom and is like, like, I'm so sorry. And the birthday boy's mom is like, why are you sorry? Like, this isn't like, are you related to her? He's like, no, this woman's like crazy, dude. Like I was in the park with, you know, my little brother. She comes up to us and says, hey, you need to get out of here because this is her private park. Turns out it was like not because it's a public park. I've been going there for like 10 years. And then she came back and said, I'm going to get revenge on you. I think she followed me to the party. So this is all kind of my fault. I'm sorry. And obviously, obviously the birthday boy's mom is like, dude, like this, like she isn't you, like you're not controlling her with like a little, like, I don't know, remote control or something like this is a random woman who followed you. This is not your fault. Um, but yeah, I wonder if she's actually going to call the cops. 20 minutes later, a police officer pulls up and he walks in. And some of the kids, like, turn around and they're like, oh, my God, what? Because, like, a police officer actually comes in. And he walks in, and the Karen runs up and is like, thank you, officer. Thank you, officer. Thank you for coming. Oh, my God, it's been terrible. It's been terrible. And the police officer is like, I got a call of a illegal function happening here that's very destructive and causing lots of damage. I've been told on the phone The police officer takes off his sunglasses and he just like surveys what's in front of him. It's a bunch of little kids with a Star Wars pinata and little flashy lightsabers and Star Wars action figures and a Lego Death Star and a bunch of parents and cake. And at that point, right, uh, uh, the the, the police officer is like, turns to the care and is like, is, am I at the right place, ma'am? And she's like, yes, yes, this is the illegal function. Shut it down right now. And also, just so you know, if you want to arrest him, in points to Andrew, you may arrest him too for being disrespectful to his elders. Police officer's like, ma'am, that's not a thing. Second of all, are you, did, and he kind of like turns to Karen. He's like, ma'am, did you really just call the police on a kid's birthday party at three in the afternoon? And the Karen's face turns and she's like, but this is a legal function. You must shut it down immediately. 
or I'm calling your manager. He's like, okay. Yeah, ma'am, I'm not shutting this down. Like, please don't waste our time. We actually have real things to deal with. And he gets in his police car and he leaves. And the Karen is standing there and she's like literally starting to shake because she is so angry and she's molding so hard. She is so angry right now. And, uh, you know, the, the, the birthday boy's mom goes up to her and is like, ma'am, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Like, I think it's pretty obvious that, like, you're not really welcome here. And she's like, you. And then points to Andrew and you, too. And then points to all the kids and you. And all the kids are like, bro, what? I'm just here for the Star Wars, bro. And she's like, you think that you can get rid of me. You think that I won't know that you paid off that police officer. And Andrew's like, bro, what? What the fuck, bro? What? Huh? And uh, she's like, can you think that, like, you can get away with this? That's no, no. I will be back. And she just, like storms out of there and they're all kind of just looking at her and then they're all looking at each other and andrew's like turns like goes to the mom of the birthday boy and it's like look we should actually be prepared for for her to come back and do something crazy i mean she was crazy enough to follow me here and then call the cops on us just because i didn't leave the park when she asked me to or demanded me 